This is their story. They are the Story Keepers. Four loaves. Uh, over here, Ben. I'll take five. Four loaves and five. Four loaves and five. Four and five, wrapped and tied. Get ready, Ben. Because here they fly. Hail, Vesuvius. Love the new toga. <laughs> Meeting tonight at the potter's den. Here you are, Philo. Meeting tonight at the potter's den. Mmm, perfect for pastry filling. I'll give you ten loaves for the box. By the way, Credo, meeting tonight at the Potter's Den. Dustin, look out! Hey, watch where you're going. Who taught you how to drive? Well, why don't you get out of the road? Hey, that's our bread. <laughs> of course, those pastries would juggle even better. Well, I think we should see this. Hey, how do you do that? Easy. It's on the wrist. Here, let me show you. Cyrus, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Good. That's it, Anna. Ben and Helena sure seem nice. Yeah, they're great. Ben's the best baker in the room. And you should hear him tell a story. Oh, my parents are great, too. We have a family circus act. We traveled the whole world. Wow. Where do you live? Oh, um, see that big white villa? We live in an even bigger one right behind it. Anna, time to go, sweetheart. You come to our meeting tonight and bring your parents. Ben's gonna tell some more stories about Jesus. Anna, are you crazy? Inviting a stranger to hear our stories? He and his parents could be spies for Nero. Zach, he's not a spy, he's a friend. of Jesus, I want to thank you all for risking so much to be here. You know, some things never change. Thirty years ago, when Jesus was teaching in Galilee, the Romans were so suspicious of gatherings, people had to leave the city to hear him speak. Ben, you go, my son. I'll mind the bakery. One day, Jesus and his disciples had gone across... Shh! You! Is Anna here? Cyrus? We can't let him in. He doesn't know the sign. Oh, uh, no? What do you call that? <laughs> he could be leading the whole Roman army right to our door. Zach, he's just a boy. And he's as welcome as anyone. Where are your parents? Couldn't they come? Oh, um, they really wanted to, but, uh... But they have, uh... A performance tonight for the, um, governor of Macedonia. Oh. Now, uh, where, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, you see, Jesus and his disciples had gone across the lake to be alone. But when they came ashore...
there was a great crowd waiting for him. There must have been 5,000 men there. Lord, we should leave this place. We'll get no rest here. But Jesus felt sorry for them, for they had no leader. They're like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them. He told them God loves everyone, the good and the bad, the honest and the dishonest alike. He loves our enemies just as he loves our friends. Surely God doesn't love the Romans. What Jesus had said was very brave because there were freedom fighters in the crowd who hated being ruled by the Romans. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who treat you badly. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Lord, this is a lonely spot and it's getting late. Send the crowds out to the farms and villages so they can buy the food for themselves. You feed them. How? It would cost a fortune to feed all these people. How much food do you have? Go and see. All we have are these five barley loaves and these two fish. Make the people sit down on the grass in groups. And they divided into groups of fifties and hundreds. Then Jesus took the food and gave thanks. He broke the food into portions and gave it to his disciples to give to the people. And everyone had enough to eat. Gather up all that is left. Let's not waste any. And they filled up 12 baskets with what was left over. Ben, what happened to the boy with the bread? Well, uh, he grew up and became a baker, just like his father. Oh, but I think he's much handsomer than his father. Open up in the name of Nero. I told you that boy was trouble. Quick, you all know what to do. Ah! Break it down. You there. Where are all the Christians hiding? Christians, sir? In here? <laughs> I'll eat this clay if you find anyone hiding here. Hmm, actually, with a little salt, it wouldn't be that bad. Search this place! Justin, uh, Marcus, Anna, and Zach. That's everyone. Thank God we're all safe. Cyrus! <laughs> it's brilliant! At the games tomorrow, the lions, dogs, and gladiators will come in from here. Oh, yes, Caesar. It's brilliant. Hold your tongue. I'm not finished. Then my champion, Giganticus, will storm in from there. Oh, yes. And finally, in my greatest stroke of genius, the Christians will come out from here and meet their doom. Where are my Christians? Snivellous! At once. Oh. Oh. Nihilus! Hail Caesar! Nihilus! Where are my Christians? They are being unloaded now, divinity. We captured scores of them in last night's raids. Excellent. It won't be long now, my friend. Anna, 
Are you sure this is where they live? Yes. Cyrus said just behind this villa. And he said one time... <gasps> The neighbor said he lost his parents in the fire. We're the only ones who can help him. Anna's right. We've got to help him. State your business. Uh, bread for the gladiators. And uh, this for yourself. On your way. Zack, you make a map of these corridors while we look for Cyrus. Cyrus? Oh, who goes there? It's Ben the Baker with stale crumbs for the prisoners. Pity guards can't eat on duty. Uh, well, uh, well, actually, it's just about time for my break. Justin, take care of our friend while we feed the prisoners. Ben! Helena! Shh! Thomas, what are you doing here? We were all rounded up in last night's raids. Back away, you scavengers! That's all the crumbs you get! Don't worry, there's plenty of bread for all of you. Anna! Cyrus, are you okay? Yeah, but tomorrow, they're gonna throw us to Giganticus. Shh! Don't panic! We'll have you out before then. Just have courage. Courage? Have you seen the size of him? Size has nothing to do with courage, Cyrus. Remember David and Goliath? And Zacchaeus? Who? Zacchaeus. He wasn't much bigger than you, but he had lots of courage. You see, the people where Jesus lived hated Zacchaeus because he collected taxes for the Romans. But what people most disliked was that Zacchaeus was a cheat. Two for Caesar, four for me. <laughs> now Zacchaeus had heard a lot about Jesus and really wanted to see him. They robbed and beat him, leaving him there, bleeding and alone. A priest was going down the same road, but he refused to stop and help. Then a Levite came by on his way to the temple where he worked. Zacchaeus! Hurry and climb down, for today I must stay in your house. Why he's going to the house of that traitor Zacchaeus? Don't you know that man is a thief? That's how he gets his money! Lord, I will give half of all I own to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I'll pay him back four times as much. Truly, God's forgiveness has come to this house today. You see, it took a lot of courage for Zacchaeus to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Staticus, party of one? Perfect. Hey, what are you doing in here? Me? Uh, I'm, uh, with the Volunteers for Arena Improvement. All right, carry on. I'd say getting Christians out of here is a definite improvement. Now, get some rest. We'll be back for you all in the morning. Anna. Thanks. It's okay, Cyrus. I'll see you tomorrow. It's perfect! Good work, Marcus. Thanks. Well, uh, I supervised him. Great. Once I open the cell, it's just 30 paces to the left, then down this corridor to the right, and we're home free! Man, what if Giganticus gets us? Ah, you take away his brute strength, killer instinct, and enormous size, and what do you have left? Me? Marcus. Giganticus may be powerful, but we have Jesus on our side. 
Is Jesus stronger than Giganticus? Of course he is. Giganticus may be able to hurt people, but he doesn't have the power to heal them. You know, there was once a man named Jairus whose daughter was very sick. My little daughter is dying. Please come and heal her so she will live. Jesus asked Jairus to lead the way. Sir, your daughter has died. Don't be afraid. Trust me. What is all this noise? This man's little girl isn't dead. She's just asleep. But Jesus sent them away. Talitha, come. Now give her something to eat. And he told them to say nothing of these events to anyone. <laughs> but it's hard to keep such a thing secret, isn't it? All right now, off to sleep. It's real pretty, but you'll be singing a different tune tomorrow when you face Giganticus. <laughs> <laughs> get stuck with babysitting the troll. I should be inside helping Ben and Zack. Ben! Ah, oh, Stauticus! The gladiators weren't very hungry today. I'm afraid I'm stuck with all these leftovers. Enough warm-up, Snivellus. Where am I weeping, frightened Christians? We need drama, we need tragedy, we need body count. Bring out the Christians! Hurry, the gate's opening. Follow me. Uh, did I mention I love icing? Bring on the Christians! I think break time is over. Ah! The prisoners are gone! The prisoners are gone! Find them! Search the arena! Come on, the exit's just ahead! I think we should go this way! If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be in this mess. I say we go that way! You see? We're almost there! I should have gone your way. Oh, no! You wait here. I'll see what's happening. Everyone, just keep calm. I have everything under control! Ah! All right, Tiny. Let's see what you got. Whoa! All right, step right up. The show's about to begin. I'll need a volunteer. Of course, I could juggle the helmets and bounce the sword. Thomas, this way! Or I could juggle the sword and bounce the helmets. Tim. 
into bits. Oh. Oh. He's good. He's very good. Another helping? No, thank you. I'll be as fat as Staticus. Thanks for dinner, Helena. That was great. And thanks to all of you. Y you know, for rescuing me. Uh, it was nothing. That's easy for you to say. W well, I better be going. My parents will be wondering where I am. Justin, Marcus, could you please help me with the dishes? We know about your parents. You, you do? Why didn't you tell me the truth? I, I guess I was just ashamed of being an orphan. But I'm an orphan. So are Justin and Marcus. Y you are? Yeah. Ben and Helena took us all in after the fire. And you'd be welcome to stay with us too. <laughs> At least until we find your parents. You mean you'd want me to stay with you? Of course. Everybody, it's finished! Come on, we have something to show you. Well, Cyrus, what do you think? It's for me? Unless you want the lower bunk. No thanks. This one's perfect. the dough cause we, we all need, need the, the bread. bread together we bake to, to keep Rome fed wonder what could be keeping Sakai. <laughs> that kid's always running late. I know, but with so many guards patrolling the streets. Helena, you worry too much. Zach's just fine, I'm sure of it. All right, you want me? Come and get me. I knew that wouldn't work. <laughs> I needed a bath anyway. Ben! Ben! The Romans have captured the story keeper in the northern district! I know, I know. Here, try one of these rolls. A roll? Ben, Christians from all over are coming to the northern district tonight, and there's no one to tell a story. You've got to come. I wish I could, Sakai, but there's a meeting here tonight. Ben's going to tell a story about John the Baptist. John the who? John the Baptist. He was the cousin of Jesus, and he lived in the desert near the Jordan River. He ate honey and locusts to stay alive. Honey-flavored insects? Yuck! You see, John was a great prophet, and when he came out of the desert, he did not like what he saw. began to tell the people to change their ways, not to steal, and not to cheat. If you have two coats, give one to someone who has none. If you have food, share that too. People everywhere were talking about this strange man. 
be baptized in the river as a sign that you want to change your ways. I baptize you with water, but the man who follows me will be greater than I am. I am not worthy to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And sure enough, not long after that, Jesus left his home in Nazareth to join the crowds at the riverbank. John was nervous. He knew he wasn't worthy to baptize Jesus. But Jesus smiled at him, and John knew it was all right. Then something wonderful happened. You are my beloved son. With you, I am pleased. After that, Jesus journeyed into the desert for 40 days and nights. But uh, I'll tell you about that some other time. Look, Ben, that was great. But what about the people in the Northern District? They aren't going to have a story tonight unless we do something. Exactly. Justin? What's that? It's a story for the Christians in the Northern District. And you're going to take it to them. That's a great idea. Oh, there's still one problem. Getting to the Northern District. The streets are practically paved with guards. There must be some way to get through. We know a way. Captain Justin to the rescue! I want to be captain. Me too. They'll be okay, won't they? Of course. Why, when I was a kid, we did it all the time. Stop with the splashing. I already had one bath today, and I'm not taking another. Oh, yeah? Three fish, seven rocks, one sandal. Ah! Ah! And approximately 356 pounds of assorted children. No, no, this won't do at all. Children and such floating about in the water duct. As aqueduct inspector, I'm afraid it's my duty to give you all a citation. Yes, sir. Won't happen again, sir. Let's get out of here. A bit old to be playing the aqueduct, aren't you, friend? Who, me? Well, uh... We weren't playing. We're Junior Praetorian Water Scouts. And he's our troop leader. I am? I mean, I am. Mm-hmm. What's that you've got behind your back? Bird. Mmm, I'll take some of that. No! What? Right, it's kind of stale. So you're one of those Christians. I've never met one in person. Halt! Ah! You'll never take me alive! Well, of course, if you want to take me alive, we could work it that way, too. Take him to the Imperial Palace. Caesar will want to interrogate him. Of course he will. Just before he feeds him to the lions. This is terrible. We've got to cook up some way of getting Zakai out of the palace. Cook up a way. That's it. Huh? Don't just stand there. We've got a lot of baking to do. Helena, what does baking have to do with rescuing Zakai? Remember the Emperor's Sweet Tooth. Of course. Of course. Let's get baking, everyone. But what are we baking? A feast for a king, my dear. <laughs> a feast for a king. Live from Caesar's palace, it's Lucius, Demetrius, Ahidobarbus, and Nero! And so I must sing this sad song of despair. For the job of a poor Caesar, tis more than most could bear. Poor Zach. It sounds like they're torturing him. 
Your Nero is great! Please stop, you're too kind. God, to the lions at once! Caesar. What have we here? We found this Christian near the aqueduct, Caesar. He was carrying this. A Christian? You know, I've never understood why you people insist on throwing away your lives for the sake of some dead Jewish carpenter. He's not dead, and all over Rome, thousands like me wait for the day he will return, and Rome will fall. Not in for a long wait. Centurion, what's on the scroll? Some kind of story, Caesar, about this Jesus of theirs. Well, that ought to be entertaining. Read us your little story, Christian. Who knows? Perhaps you'll convert us all. <laughs> you heard, Caesar. Read. You don't want to hear the story. You just want to make fun of it. I'll not dishonor my lord for Caesar's entertainment. I am your lord, Christian. Read the story, I command you. I'd rather die. As you wish. But first, I simply must know what you're dying for. Centurion, what does it say? It starts with Jesus and his disciples at the Sea of Galilee, Caesar. Well, go on. Read it. Read it. That evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Come, let's cross over to the other side. But before long, a furious storm came up. And terrible waves began to break over the bow of the disciples' boat, filling it with water. Master, please wake up. Master, please, don't you care if we drown? Silence. Be quiet. And upon his command, the wind died down until the sea was completely calm. Why are you frightened? Do you still not trust me? And they turned to one another and said, What sort of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, what are you all staring at? I've never heard such a ridiculous story in my entire life. It's completely absurd. Yes, Caesar, absolutely absurd. No doubt about it. In fact, I'd have to say, on a scale from one to Shush ten... Shush up, Snivellus. Shushing up, Caesar. Destroy the scroll at once. Yes, Caesar. And as for this wretch, I want him thrown to the lions at the games tomorrow. He shall be an example to all of Rome of how we deal with Christians. <laughs> I sure hope Ben gets here soon. We could be here for hours. Oh, I hate the thought of Zakai being held prisoner by that madman, Nero. Why is Nero mad at Zakai, Ben? Well, he's not that kind of mad, Marcus. What kind of mad is he? Well, he's like that man Jesus met at Carassa. Who? Well, you see, one day, Jesus and his disciples sailed across the Sea of Galilee to a place called Gerasa, where there lived a wild man. He slept in a cave, and the local villagers were terrified of him. Shortly after Jesus and the disciples arrived, the wild man appeared before them. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Come out of this man, evil spirit. For God's sake, don't torment me. What is your name? I am Legion. We are as numerous as the Roman army. And Legion begged Jesus not to send him away. Send us among the pigs. Let us go into them. <laughs> Well, 
When the villagers heard what had happened, they came to see for themselves. They were astonished to see the wild man now fully clothed and in his own right mind. They became frightened and begged Jesus to leave the area. As Jesus and the others were about to sail away, the man appeared. He begged Jesus to let him go with them. Go home to your family and friends. Tell them what God has done for you. I like the Legion story, Ben. Is that the end? <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> Look, we can cross. Hold on, everybody. We made it, we made it. It's a little early for a victory celebration. Get your disguises ready, everyone. The tough part of our mission is just beginning. Make up the words as I go along. No one is as clever by far. My amazing talent will make me a star. Yes, that's it. Wonderful, Caesar. Simply wonderful. I'm not finished, Snivellus. What are the wonderful citizens? Are you deaf? I said I'm not finished. Encore! Encore! Snivellus! I am going to kill! What a lot of waxy build-up you have. You really should clean your ears more often. Please, your divinity. Your voice is a symphonic sensation. A melodious... Hail Caesar! I am Ben Pierre, the famous baker from Gaul. And this is my family. We have brought pastry for the emperor. Pastry, you say? We, oui, in honor of uh, the 21st birthday of Caesar's uncle's third cousin on his mother's side twice removed, uh, we have prepared a selection of our finest culinary treats. Third cousin on my mother's side? We, oui. and uh, now, if your majesty pleases, I will describe for him the pastries. Over here, we have the fruit-filled pastries. Ah. Cyrus, it's Ben. <laughs> Look at that outfit. Hey, this thing's loose. What do you want? I suppose you're here to torture me. Well, go ahead. I'm not afraid of you. What's this? Poison? It's water. If I wanted to kill you, I wouldn't bother with poison. I see your point. And these are our famous cream-filled pastries. Mmm, delicious. And lastly, the creme de la creme. <laughs> you mustn't eat this one. This pastry is special. It is my well-famous secret poison torture pastry. One bite and... How delightful. Well, I simply must see a demonstration. It is a pity you don't have any of those loathsome Christians around. <laughs> they make especially good torture pastry victims. You don't say. God, fetch me the Christian prisoner at once. You know, you don't have to die. I've seen Nero pardon people like you before. Yeah, right. If they deny Jesus. You don't have to deny a thing. You just have to accept that Nero is also a god. Then I guess I have to die. Hmm. Who is this Jesus that inspires such crazy loyalty in his followers? I would like to have met this man. You still can. But he's dead. Can I... Shh! Caesar demands to see the prisoner at once. Welcome back, Christian. I didn't want to send you to the lions on an empty stomach. My baker friend here has a pastry that's to die for. <laughs> ben, what are you doing here? Don't worry, everything's under control. Just follow my lead. 
And now, Christian wretch, eat this poison torture pastry so we can all watch you go into convulsions and collapse dead upon the floor. No, I won't. Oh. <clears throat> Every, everything's getting dark. I'm so cold. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Did you see his tortured expression? Did you hear his agonized gasps? Wasn't it wonderful? I'll take six dozen of those pastries for the next senator's ball. Of course, Caesar. And now, for no extra charge, we will remove the body from your imperial sight. Well... How refreshing to have someone take the rubbish out without being asked. Please, Caesar, bless you. Thank you. It's a trick. Stop them. After the men. Poison torture pastry, indeed. Did you really think you could fool Caesar? Throw them to the lions at once. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Are you crazy? Come on, help me! Let's get him! I only hope you perform as well in the lion pits. <laughs> Look out! My statue! My beautiful statue! Ben! Over here! Oh. Hurry, before I change my mind. They're getting away! After them! Ben! Catch! Let's get out of here! Zakai was supposed to be here hours ago. We better go tell the others. But what are we going to tell them? Those people risked their lives to be here tonight. I know that. But what can we do? We don't have a story. I guess you're right. Wait, look! There they are. Ben, get ready to hand off the scroll. No problem. I've got it right here. Hey. Uh-oh. What would I do without you? Ben? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you all. Don't mention it! Because of your faith and bravery, hundreds of people will hear a new story tonight. What story will they hear, Ben? Well, it's a story about the time Jesus and his disciples got caught in a terrible storm on the sea. That evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Come, let's cross over to the other side. Tonight's meeting is especially dangerous, Cyrus. Ben's friend Ephraim will be there, and the Romans would love to catch him because he's told so many people the stories of Jesus. I think it's safe now. You there. We're searching for a man named Ephraim, a Christian. Do you know him? No, I don't. All right. 
You call that an interrogation, Tacticus? I'll show you. <sighs> Do you know a Christian named Ephraim? No, I, I swear. You not only know him, you are Ephraim, aren't you? Aren't you? I said you were Ephraim. You were Ephraim the story keeper. Yes, y yes, anything you say. Liar. <laughs> that, my friend, is how it's done. Why do they have to be so cruel, Justin? They beat my father like that before they took him away. My old friend. Ephraim, I'm so glad you made it. Everyone's been looking forward to hearing your stories. Friends of Jesus, uh, please welcome Ephraim, the master storyteller. Ah, Ben is too kind. But he knows as well as anyone, I am nothing compared to the greatest storyteller of all. Why, one day I remember hearing Jesus in Galilee. And as he spoke, a man stepped forward. What must I do to live in God's new way? What do the scriptures say? They say we must love God and our neighbors as ourselves. Yes. Do this and you will live. But who is my neighbor? There was a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some men set a trap on the road. And when the man came by, they robbed and beat him. Leaving him there, bleeding and alone. A priest was going down the same road, but he refused to stop and help. Then a Levite came by on his way to the temple where he worked. Then just as the man thought he would die, a Samaritan came by. The wounded man did not think a stranger from Samaria would help. But the foreigner took pity on him and stopped. After tending to the man's wounds, the Samaritan took him to an inn. This man needs help. Do you know this man? No, but please, just take care of him. If it costs more than this, I'll pay you on the way back. The innkeeper was amazed. Samaritans and Jews don't usually speak to one another. Yet the priest and Levite had broken their own law by not helping the man. Now, which of those men who passed by the wounded traveler was his neighbor? The one who was kind to him. Exactly. Now you go and do the same. Now there was a master storyteller. Ah, yes. Did you ever meet Jesus? Who? Jesus. Oh, him, yes, of course. Now, now, if you'll excuse me. Whoops. I don't remember seeing you before. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm visiting. I'm visiting my uh, uncle, yes, and, and there he is. Oh, uncle! And finally, this is Marcus and his brother Justin. I am pleased to meet you all. Come, come. Helena has a feast waiting, and then I'll tell you about our plans. Believe me, we'll have you out of the city before Nero even knows you were here. What do you mean he's here? Who's here? The one responsible for spreading all that Jesus nonsense throughout all of Cappadocia. Oh, him. Why, the unmitigated god! It's bad enough he spreads that poison out in the sticks, but to come here... Philomius, thank you for bringing this to my attention. You're <coughs> welcome. Tacticus, why isn't this Christian here now begging for his life? Well, sir, we haven't found him yet, but I have my men on alert for any unusual activity. 
<laughs> if your men are alert at all, that will be unusual activity. Do you mean Felonius is the one man who knows where this Christian is? That Felonius is the one true, loyal, everlasting friend of Rome? Well, I, I didn't actually see where he went. To the lions at once! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, where were we? The search for the Christian is a job for my Praetorian Guard, not these common foot soldiers. Let me do this my way, and I guarantee we'll have that story keep us silenced by nightfall. The only thing you can guarantee, Nihilus, is brutality and destruction. Brutality and destruction? Why, Tacticus, what an excellent idea. I want you and Nihilus to work together. Sir! Silence! Now close the city gates, and let no one travel the highways of the Empire without my official seal. I want that Christian dead, as well as anyone caught hiding him. You have your orders, now go! Down! Get up! <gasps> Open up! Get up! You Christians can't escape forever! Sometimes I don't understand. Even if they are different, these Christians don't seem so bad. Still, Caesar is my god, and I do as he commands. Guards, search that house. <gasps> You there! What are you doing? Uh, I was just making deliveries. Deliver this! Hey! Watch where you're going, boy! Ow! Get your hands off of me! And you, get off the streets! One day you're gonna pay for this! You're all gonna pay! Tell us the story. Tell us the story. Yeah, a story about Jesus. Ephraim will tell another story tonight. Right now, we have to discuss our plans to get him out of Rome. Does he have to leave? I'm afraid so, Anna. There are many people in Genoa who have never heard the stories of Christ, and I have to plant the seeds. He's going to plant seeds in Genoa? I thought he was a storykeeper, not a farmer. Well, Cyrus, Telling the stories of Jesus is like planting a seed in someone's heart. Helena, tell him about the sower. <laughs> ah, yes. One day, Jesus was teaching a crowd by the sea. Listen to this. A farmer went to plant his crop. Now some seeds fell on the path and the birds ate them. Some seeds fell on rocky ground. These shot up quickly because the soil was thin, but they were scorched by the sun. Some seeds fell among the thorn bushes, and the thorns grew up and choked them so that they never ripened. But some seeds fell into good soil and made 30 times more grain. Some up to 60, and others up to 100 times more grain. And Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. Hear what? I don't get it. Well, neither did his disciples. At least, not at first. Master, why do you talk to people in stories? Why not say what you mean, like you do with us? When I'm talking to you, I can talk about God's way plainly, about how God cares for everyone everywhere. But those who hear me as I'm passing through their villages don't know me as well. Like the scriptures say, I put things into stories. That way, those who want to hear me can, but those whose hearts are closed never do. Like the scriptures say, they look, but they don't really see what's there. They listen, but they don't understand. Because if they did understand, they'd change their ways. Ben! Ben! The soldiers are coming! We've got to hide Ephraim! Justin, you and Anna take Ephraim to the catacombs and wait for me. I'll keep the guards busy. Caesar! Hurry! I said open this door! I'm coming! 
coming, I'm coming. Stardicus! Oh, Ben, I didn't realize this was your bakery. Come in, come in. I'm afraid I'll have to. Nero's orders. We're searching the whole district. Come on, Ephraim! So, are you searching for anything in particular? Well, actually, <laughs> these look good. By all means, help yourself. Well, Stauticus, <gasps> hoping to find a Christian beneath that crust. No, sorry, sir. I was just about to... <laughs> Guards! <laughs> What was that? Nero's Baker, eh? If I find you've been hiding that story, Keeper, I'll bake you. Are you sure you know where you're going? I know these tunnels like the back of my hand. I had to live down here for a month after the fire. At least the children are safe and they didn't find a fry him. Psst, Ben. What was that? Ben. The picture's talking. Marcus, it's just the guy. Is it safe? Yes, they're gone. Come in, come in. Ben, you won't believe it. We've gathered a whole cartload of food and clothing for Ephraim to take to our friends in Genoa. That's wonderful. Yeah, and I got these. Traveling papers for Ephraim. Traveling papers? Nero set up checkpoints on all the highways, but with these, once Ephraim's out of the city, he can travel anywhere in the Empire. Excellent. Zach, tell everyone to bring their gifts for the Genoa Christians to Zedekai's cave. Here, we'll meet you there tonight. But that's outside the city. How will you get a fry him there? Catacombs, my boy. They don't call us underground Christians for nothing. <laughs> but we've looked everywhere. I don't want excuses. I want that Christian. And if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Now go! Tacticus, I think I've found our man. Come, I'll show you how to deal with these Christians. Anna, slow down! Oh, sorry! Are you okay? Yes, just give me a minute to catch my breath. We're being followed. Run! Come! I wonder how deep this is. I don't intend to find out. They're getting closer. Ben, it's me they want. You and the children go on. You have a better chance of making it without me. No, Ephraim. Anna, here, take this. Hop on my back. The Lord will give me the strength of two men. I thought you said the Lord would give you the strength of two men. Well, they must have been very small men. Justin, help me with this. What are you doing? If we pull out the support, we could bring the roof down behind us. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> sure, that'll stop them. I don't understand. Tacticus! Anna, Justin, are you all right? We're fine. You and the friend go on to the cave. We'll meet you there. I know another way. Anna! Anna? I don't hear the guards anymore. Maybe they were buried alive. That's what they deserve. Uh-oh! The tunnel is collapsing! Oh! Oh! Help me! Help me! 
help yourself. Are you okay? Yeah. What's that? It's him. He's one of the soldiers that... Who's there? Nihilus? Is that you? Here. Here, grab my whip. What do we do? Nothing. We gotta help him. He'll die. So, leave him there. Justin, it's not right. What they did to our parents wasn't right. Nihilus, please help me. The papers! <gasps> oh, thank goodness. We were getting work. Where are the children? There was a cave-in. We, we were separated. They're trying to come another way. Zack, take some men. See if you can find them. <sighs> oh, Nihilus. I didn't think you'd come back. You? You saved me? We had to. You could have died. But... You're Christians. Uh-huh. Anna! I came in here to arrest you. Why would you risk your lives for me? We were just doing what the Samaritan did. What Samaritan? The one in the story Ephraim told us. Ah, Ephraim, the story keeper. He's the man I'm after. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble now. Thanks to you, we just lost his traveling papers. <sighs> Take me to him. How much do we have to take from Nero's thugs? Please, I'm sure Zack will find the children. There are only two soldiers in there, and there are 50 of us. I say we go in there and get some revenge! Friends, friends, we mustn't be like other people. We must learn to forgive. How long can this go on? Yes, but how many times do we have to forgive them? Disciple Peter asked the same thing. Yes! Come, listen. They were walking in the hillsides, and Peter said, But Lord, when somebody treats me badly, how many times do I have to forgive him? Is seven times enough? No, not seven times or seventy, but seven times seventy. There once was a king who wanted to settle accounts with the men who worked for him. One man owed him thousands of silver coins, but didn't have any money to pay him. Then everything you own will be sold to pay your debt, even your wife and children. Ah! Oh, give me time. I'll pay you back. I promise. The king felt sorry for the man, crossed out his debt, and let him go. But on the way home, the man met another one of the king's officers, who owed him a small amount. Pay me what you owe me. Give me time. I'll pay in full. I promise. <laughs> when the king found out what the man had done, he was furious. You wicked man. I wiped out your debt when you begged for time to pay. You should have done the same for this man. Guards! Take him to prison until he repays all his debt. We must forgive those who wrong us, just as God has forgiven us. Are you Ephraim, the storykeeper? I am Ephraim. Are you the one who told these children the stories of Jesus? If the people who hear your stories become like these children, then all of Rome should hear about your Jesus. You'll be needing these traveling papers. You're drawn to him, aren't you? A fellow centurion left me to die. But these children saved my life because of Jesus. Come, we'll talk. No, no, it's not safe now. My men will be looking for me. You must go, all of you. Then I leave you in the hands of my friend, Ben. Look for me at my bakery. May your God go with you, Ephraim. He will, my brother. 
And also with you. And as for you, I don't know how to thank you, but I will find a way. You, Christian! Halt in the name of Caesar! Spot, Hannah. Cyrus, any sign of the courier? Not yet, Zach. Well, keep a sharp eye out. And fix your camouflage. I can still see you. Justin, why aren't you in position? I'm going. Don't get your toga all in a bunch. How am I supposed to work with a bunch of amateurs like this? What's wrong with Sakai, Ben? Well, Marcus, the courier we're waiting for is Sakai's uncle, Mordecai. He was a great leader among the zealots, and Zakai wants to make a good impression. Here he comes! Positions, everybody! Get him, get him! Hold on! He's not gonna make it! I'll activate the emergency barricade! Christians can't escape Roman justice forever! Mordecai! We're so glad to have you with us. Oh, not as glad as I am, Helena. For a moment there, I didn't think I'd make it. Now, where's that nephew of mine? Zack, what are you doing? Don't you want to see your Uncle Mordecai? I can't believe I missed that shot. He's going to be so disappointed in me. Everyone misses a shot now and then. You don't understand, Ben. My father was one of the greatest leaders the Zealots ever had. He would never have missed. There you are. Zakai! Uncle Mordecai, watch this! I don't understand. This never happens. Well, you hit the mark when it counted. You saved my neck back there. I thought Ben hit the target. Oh. <laughs> uh, you're the image of your father. God rest his soul. And I'll bet you're every bit the leader he was, too. Which reminds me, I have something for you. Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. It's the shield of David. Thank you, Uncle Mordecai. I promise I'll be worthy of it. Mordecai, did you and Zach's dad really lead an uprising in Galilee? Did you really defeat a Roman garrison? Tell us about the freedom fighters in Judea. Enough! Uncle Mordecai doesn't have time to sit around and entertain a bunch of children. Well, of course I do. Zach, you remember what Jesus said about the way we should treat children? What? What did he say? Well, Marcus, one day... Jesus and his disciples were on the road to Jerusalem. It had been a long journey. The disciples had become irritable and were quarreling with each other. What were you arguing about earlier? As it turned out, well, they had been arguing about which one of them was the most important. <laughs> <laughs> I have already told you that my kingdom belongs to people who are like this child. The disciples knew how important children were to Jesus because of something that had happened on another occasion. Let the boys and girls come to me. Don't stop them. Anyone who does not accept God's kingdom like a little boy or girl will not get inside. Ah! <laughs> 
So you see, Zakai, Jesus holds children in very high regard. As do I, Uncle. What good is a leader without followers? All right, everybody. Break time is over. Attention! It's time to show Uncle Mordecai how efficiently we can set up for tonight's meeting. Let's move out! Justin, break out the torches. Anna, Cyrus, get the benches from the storage room. Marcus, assemble more camouflage for the lookout. Move it! You know, Mordecai, I think he may have missed the point of your story. Hurry up with those benches! I think you're right. Now, let's see. Where should I build my lovely new pantheon? Try over there, Snivellus. Hail Caesar! Ah, Nihilus. I understand you lost another Christian courier in the Merchant District. Caesar, the district is riddled with secret passages and tunnels. It's impossible to patrol. Would that you'd allow me to burn it to the ground. Hmm. That would provide a perfect spot for my new pantheon. Don't just stand there, Snivellus. <laughs> but Caesar, a fire in the merchant district could kill hundreds of people. Wonderful. Nihilus, have you a plan? As a matter of fact, I call it the Wrath of Caesar. Perfect for those large, hard-to-start infernos. Fascinating. <gasps> oh, I like it! Reload me! I'll do what I can to stall Nihilus. Now go. Mm -hmm. Of you ask, how long must we go on telling the stories of Jesus in secret? Well, one thing is certain. They won't be able to keep us quiet forever, any more than they could keep a blind beggar quiet when Jesus passed by. It was on the road to Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples had to pass through the city of Jericho. And it was there that they met a blind man called Bartimaeus. Look! It's Jesus of Nazareth. It's Jesus of Nazareth. It's Jesus. Jesus. Look! Mm -hmm. It's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Son of David! Jesus! Help me! Help me! Son of David! Shh! Be quiet. Sit down, man. Son of David! Help me! Call that man over here. Get up! He's calling you! Cheer up! He wants you! What do you want me to do for you? I... I want my sight back. Go home. Because you have trusted me. You have been made better. <gasps> and just like that, Bartimaeus see. could see again. I can see. Yes. Hmm? 
There he is. What's wrong? I think I may be too late. There's going to be a fire. What? Ben, we're surrounded! Friends, please! If we panic, it will only make things worse. I don't think they can get much worse. Bolta! That will teach those Christians to defy Roman law. Reload! Keep it coming! Marcus, you're spilling it everywhere. Here, let me. I could use your help, Marcus. What are you doing here? <laughs> Hail, Nihilus. How goes the fire? So you've come to share in my victory. Well, Nero put me in charge here, and I don't need any help from you. Stay out of my way, and you won't get hurt. Roman bath? It's freezing! My humblest apologies, Senator. I'll turn up the fire right away! Bathspitter! We did it! For the time being, but Tacticus won't be able to stall Nihilus forever. Darius is right. We'll have to evacuate. How? We're completely surrounded. We all knew this day would come, and we're prepared for it. You all know what to do. Evacuation going. Mission accomplished. We're the only ones left. Sakai, you and Helena take Mordecai and the kids to the exit point. Justin and I will dress the other wagon and meet you back at the bakery. Go easy on Hannah, Zach. Fire makes her nervous. You don't need to tell me. My father was a master horseman. He drove chariots, Zach. This is a wagon full of children. Don't worry, Uncle Mordecai. I know what I'm doing. We've run at the catapult, sir. If there are any more mistakes, the next flaming projectile to be launched will be you. Helena, how can Nero be so cruel? It's his way of punishing us because we don't always do what he tells us to do. Why don't we? Because sometimes you've got to do what you know is right, even if it gets you into trouble. You know, one time, when Jesus was in the synagogue, there was a man there with a paralyzed hand. It was the Sabbath, the day Jews are supposed to do no work. A group of Pharisees and members of King Herod's court were watching to see if Jesus would dare to heal this man on the Sabbath. Stand up for everybody to see you. What is the right thing to do on the holy day? Good or evil? To make someone better or let him die? Jesus was angry because the religious leaders were being so strict and obstinate. Stretch out your hand. Although they admired his powers, 
Many Pharisees were furious that Jesus had broken their law. Jesus knew this would get him into trouble. The Pharisees were so angry, they joined with the friends of King Herod to plot against Jesus, much like Nero plots against the Christians of Rome. Fire! Justin said go easy on her. Yeah, but I can have us out of here in no time. Zach? Yeah! <laughs> the range! Uh, shouldn't we be heading the other way? Tell that to Hannah! Whoa! What in the world? I can't stop her! They're heading right into the fire! Fire burn bright, fire burn strong. Soon I'll build my Parthenon. <laughs> I can't quite reach. Take my hand. Got him. Thanks, Uncle Mordecai. I'll show her who's boss. Hannah, you will stop right now. Just like ants, don't they? They look like people to me. They teach driving like that in Baker School? <laughs> Target that statue! There must be some way out of here! We're trapped! Uncle Mordecai, I'm sorry. This whole thing is my fault. Chin up, Zekai. I've been in tighter scrapes than this. Though none quite this warm. I just wanted to impress you, that's all. Impress me? Is that why you've been acting so strangely? I don't even deserve to wear my father's medallion. Nonsense! Zack, your father wasn't born a great leader. He became one over time, and you will too. I... I will? Once you learn to think a little before you leap into action. Look out! Here comes another one! I can hardly breathe! <coughs> if that one goes, we're done for! Father, I've let everyone down. What should I do? Cyrus, do you think you can climb to the top of that statue? Sure, but why? I've got an idea. It's a long shot, but it just might work. 
Anna, Justin, we'll need your help too. Why don't you double the load? Speed things up. I'm in charge of this operation, Tacticus. I'll give the orders. Double the load! Good. Now tie off the rope. Be careful. time prepare to fire but sir i don't think we should you're not here to think no fire the catapult but sir i said fire ah give me that bucket but sir that oil Again. Then I was proud just to know you. Now give it your best. That's all anyone can do. Now! Now that's a shot even your father would have been proud of. What do you think, Anna? Catch! Ow! Hut! Hut! Hey! Hey! Cyrus, I'm doing it! I knew you could. Now that's what I call <laughs> hot tossed buns. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> and now for our main attraction, a story from the amazing Ben and Helena. Thank you. You know, your show reminded me of a man Jesus talked about. Was he a juggler? No. <laughs> no. But he did put on a show every time he prayed. Me? Surely you can't be talking about me. You see, among the people who were interested in what Jesus said, there were religious men called Pharisees. They worked very hard at doing the right thing, but sometimes they overdid it. One day, Jesus told the story and made sure the Pharisees were listening. Two men came into the men's court of the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. The other was a tax collector who worked for the Romans. The Pharisee stood on his own where he thought he would be noticed. Oh, Lord. I thank you that I am not like other people, greedy, dishonest, and wicked, or like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I earn to the temple. And while the Pharisees prayed, the tax collector wouldn't even look up. Oh, God, have mercy on me. I, I know I'm no good. Jesus told the people that it was the tax collector, not the Pharisee, who went home forgiven. What do you mean, he was the one forgiven? I prayed the loudest. 
goodness, who could that be? Everyone stay calm. Who is it? Ben? Titus? Then, after the fires, I was part of a group of Christians who were sentenced to life on a slave ship, if you can call it life. Oh, Titus. Our father was on a slave ship. Joshua Ben Judah, do you know him? Son, there are hundreds of ships, and many of their slaves are Christians. But still, he could have been on your ship. You should pray he's not. Captain Hadrian would rather starve the slaves than feed them. There are dozens of men still on that ship, all in worse shape than I am. Ben, we've got to help them. But what can we do? We're going to do what we can with what we have. In other words, I think it's time we took our show on the road. can stop us cause we do as we please uh-oh it's the unbeatable undefeatable not real sweetable hadrian the ruthless retreat raining speed <laughs> doing here boy uh, I'm looking for my father the only thing you'll find here is trouble now go before you get us all killed <laughs> captain one of our ships has been taken in a slave revolt Nero orders you to set sail at once and catch them before they reach the open sea cast off immediately Sound the battle alarm! Wait! The big finale's coming up! Do you know my father? Joshua Ben Judah. Do you know him? All slaves to oars! Wait! Has anyone seen my father? Joshua Ben Judah! He's not on this ship, son. Justin! Ben! Ben! Hey! Watch it with those oars! Helena, what's happening? We're going into battle if we don't get off this ship right now! Too late! Look! Zach's waiting for us. Ben! Hurry! The captain. 
Captain will deal with you shortly. Wow, this is nice. Must be the captain's quarters. How can he live like this while so many people are suffering right beneath his feet? Yeah, Jesus said we should be kind to people. I don't think the captain was listening when Jesus said that. I'm afraid he's like the man who built his house on the sand. Who? A man Jesus talked about one day when he was teaching in Capernaum. Everyone who listens to me and does something about it is like the man who builds his house on a rock. Then winter comes. But that house stands up to all because underneath is the rock. But whoever listens to me and does nothing is like a foolish builder. He built his house on sand, then winter came. And the rains fell and the floods came and the wind blew. And down came his house with a tremendous crash. Captain on deck. So, these are the stowaways. Uh, actually, we were... Quiet! I don't know why you're still on my ship, but I do know. We're going into battle and everyone on this boat pulls his weight. <gasps> you, take this mop. You, give water to the soldiers. You two, stay here and clean. And you, what do you do? Uh, I'm a baker. Excellent. My cook makes the worst rolls in the Roman Navy. Absolutely indestructible. Take this baker to the galley at once. Ben the baker reporting for duty. Quiet, I'm fixing soup for the slaves. I thought he was washing the dishes. Now, that's one rotten tomato, one tiny slice of carrot. Finally, fresh chicken. Oop, too much. Always leave him one more. Now, what do you want? Uh, I'm supposed to help with the bread. Bread? Good, I can use some help. You know, everybody loves my rolls. And they really came in handy against the Asinians. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll do my best, sir. Good, but remember, it's not just a roll. It's a military secret. Get over here with that water! Just a little sip. Boy, I said over here! It's not supposed to smell like that. Perhaps you should taste it and tell us what we've done wrong. But I've got so much to do. We can finish in the kitchen for you. Uh, take your time with the bread. Yes, yes. Good idea. Mm. from him. He's dying of thirst. If he doesn't row, he'll die of much worse. I'll take his place. Take his place? <laughs> At least until he's better. This I've got to see. Go ahead, little man. Row. Gentlemen, since we have new blood, let's have attack speed for a while, shall we? You're just determined to get us killed, aren't you? I was only trying to help. If you want to help, keep silent and row. <laughs> Is 
Is this batch any better? No, no, it's still too soft. Please pass the butter. about the boy must be nice to be free it's not so great as you think my dad's a slave and I don't know where he is <laughs> Jesus went back to Capernaum. People had heard all about him, so they came from all around the countryside to listen to him. He was teaching people about God's way. But the place was packed. No one could get in or out. Over here, I found a way. saw the trust these four men had in him to help their friend, he said to the paralytic, Young man, your sins are forgiven. Why does a man say things like that? Only God can forgive sins. Is it easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven, or get up, pick up your mat and walk? Stand up, take your mat, and walk home. We've never seen anything like this. I, I can stand. Amazing! Incredible. That was an amazing story, Ben. And an amazing dinner. Justin, the name's Andrew. You did a good thing, rowing for Caleb today. I'm sure wherever your father is, he would be very proud. I'm not even sure if he's still alive. All slaves to oars! What's happening? We're under attack! It's the rebel ship. And it's headed right at us. Four doors in. Hard to starboard. Bring her about now. Four doors in! To port, to port now! Sir, some of the oars were damaged in the last pass. They're coming back around. Prepare to be boarded. Mind your posts. In position there. Where'd it go? I don't know. I don't see it. I do. Ah! Give me your hand, Zakai! Whoa! Ben! Hold on, Zach! We'll get to you somehow! Can I get a hand? Ow! That's not what I had in mind. Come on, we can make it out through the kitchen. 
good old Fest, as calm as he can be. Listen! Who is it, Justin? The slaves! They're still chained up! Don't drown! I saw some keys in the captain's quarters. Let's go! Get to the other ship. Justin and I will see to the slaves. Be careful. We will. Ben, look out! No! I think I can make it. Give me a hand. Easy. Easy. Thanks to young Justin here. Well done, lad. I mean, there we were, the sea pouring in up to our throats, when suddenly the door bursts open and in comes the boy with a fistful of keys. Justin? I said I didn't know your father, but here's someone who does. Justin, I'd like you to meet our captain, Micah Bentola. So, you're the son of Joshua Ben Judah. You know him? Know him? I'll never forget him. Your father saved my life once. Last I heard, he'd escaped from his ship and was searching for your mother on the farms of Carthage. I've never met a braver man. You're just like him. Once off the coast of Egypt, he and I went... I said after them! After them! By the way, what's for dinner? Looks like we are! Stars are so bright. A little too bright, Anna. Nero's guards can spot us a mile away. We never should have taken this road in the first place. Don't worry, Zack. Our friends in Ostia assure me that if anyone can get us there safely, it's Milo. I don't see how. He's as old as the hills, deaf as a stone, and he talks to his horse. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong, Regis. We go left at the next junction, not right. Huh? Ben, why are we going all the way to Ostia for a story meeting? Because it's too dangerous in Rome, Marcus. As more people become Christians, Nero sends even more guards to try and catch us. What's that, Regis? Roman guards? Well, I sure don't smell any guards. Oh, that's a relief. Milo doesn't smell any... Guards! Guess you were right, Regis. 
Hold on, everybody! Whoa! got any tricks up your sleeve, you'd better use them right now. Right? Only a half-witted go with blinkers on would go right. We want to go left. Are you trying to get us killed? Sit down. Is everyone all right? I think so. Well, the wagon's not. So much for the story meeting. We'll never get to Ostia now. Don't be so sure. I said I'd get you folks to Ostia, and I mean to do just that. Just stay out of what's left of my hair, and we'll be on our way again in no time. I'm cold. I think we can do something about that. Where'd the leaders in Ostia find that old smuggler anyway? No one knows much about Milo, except that he's traveled just about every road, footpath, and goat trail in the Empire. There goes another one! Wow! Why do stars fall, Ben? I couldn't tell you, Marcus. That's a question for the Magi. Who? Magi are men who study the stars. In fact, a group of them play an important part in one of my favorite stories. A long time ago, when my father was still just a boy, several magi discovered a new star. They knew the star meant a special king had been born. So they decided to follow the star to Israel in hope of finding him. The Magi traveled for nearly two years before finally arriving in Israel's capital city, Jerusalem. Unfortunately, there was another king living in Israel at the time, and his name was Herod. He was a vain, cruel, moody man who lived in constant fear. Someone is trying to steal my throne. I know it. He would do anything, even kill his own wife and family, to remain king. The visit of the Magi did little to comfort him. Great king. We have come to worship the child who was born to be the king of the Jews. Do you know where we may find him? I am king of the Jews. Their only king. Where can I find the other king of which they spoke? <clears throat> In Bethlehem, as the prophet Micah wrote hundreds of years ago, Herod immediately called for another meeting with the Magi. Herod. The child you seek is in Bethlehem. When you find him, come back and tell me where he is. For I would like to worship him too. And so, the Magi traveled to nearby Bethlehem. child they had come to see was now two years old. He was staying in Bethlehem with his parents, Joseph and Mary. The Magi opened the gifts they had brought for him. Gold fit for a king. 
frankincense for worship, and myrrh. This last gift was a strange one. Myrrh is usually used in the burial of the dead. Perhaps the Magi knew that much sorrow would come to this little boy. Just as suddenly as they had arrived, they left. No one knows where they went, but one thing is certain. They didn't return to Herod's palace. from the Magi, Your Majesty. When Herod realized the Magi had tricked him, he flew into uh, one of his uh, terrible uh, rages. Uh, those meddling sorcerers are trying to hide the child from me. <laughs> so be it. By the time I'm finished, they'll wish they delivered him to me on a plate. Assemble your men. They are to scour the city of Bethlehem and kill every male child under the age of two. But, Your Majesty... No one must escape alive. Do you understand? That's an order! Yes, Herod. How did Joseph and Mary escape, Ben? Yeah, Ben. Finish the story. Well, the same night that King Herod ordered his men to kill the newborn children, Joseph was warned by an angel of the Lord in a terrible dream. Ah, oh, and king of the Jews, their only king. <laughs> Joseph and Mary knew from the dream that they had to escape. And they didn't have much time. For sure enough, Herod's men carried out their orders. Mary and Jesus managed to escape. The sound of weeping mothers that night was a sad sound indeed. And so the family made their way to Egypt. King Herod was even worse than Nero. At least Joseph, Mary, and Jesus didn't get caught. Yeah, well, we might not be so lucky if those guards decide to double back. I'll see what's taking so long. No, Regis, you've got it all wrong. Two rabbis walk into a tavern, and they've got a duck. I hate to interrupt, but how's the wheel coming? And the first rabbi asked the innkeeper if he serves ducks. What am I doing? This old coot couldn't hear a thunderbolt if it hit him in the ear. Watch it, Sonny. It's a long walk to Ostia. <laughs> Who ever heard of driving down a riverbed? Was this your idea, or did Regis suggest it? Very funny. He's just a horse. No, there's nothing wrong with being a horse. I'm just saying. 
One thing's for sure, Nero's guards will never spot us down here. Exactly. Daddy boy, I know these parts better than an old dog knows his fleas. You can take it from me, there's absolutely no quicker way to Caesarea Philippi than straight down this riverbed. But we're going to Ostia. I know that. Psst. Helena, were you ever in Bethlehem? No, but my parents once passed through Nazareth. That's the town in Judea where Joseph and Mary lived. But I thought Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was, but the story really begins before that. You see, in those days, Joseph worked as a carpenter. He had just become engaged to Mary, who lived nearby. Now, Nazareth is only a small town. For that matter, Israel is only a small country. And as Ben will tell you, the people have always hated being ruled by the Roman Emperor. Just like today, they longed to be free and dreamed of the day God would send them a great leader. Some prepared to fight, and others, like Mary, prayed. Peace be with you, Mary. The Lord is with you and has blessed you. Mary was confused by the voice and wondered what it meant. God is pleased with you. You will have a son and will call him Jesus. God will make him a king and his kingdom will never end. But how can this happen since I am still a virgin? There is nothing God cannot do. His spirit will come to you and his powers will rest on you. The child will be a holy child. He will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen to me as you have said. And so it did. Mary soon learned she was going to have a baby. Because they were not yet married, Joseph thought the right thing to do was break off their engagement quietly. Hey, why are we stopping here? You folks stay here. I'll be right back. Wait, where are you going? Where's it look like I'm going? I have to talk to someone inside to get the location of this secret meeting of yours. Hmm. I don't like this, Ben. It could be a trap. Milo's brought us this far. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. That's what I'm afraid of. There they are. We can find the meeting on our own. Milo said he'd be back. I think we should trust him. Me too. We'll wait just a while longer. But Ben! Why don't you continue with the story, Helen? Well, uh, one night, not long after he had called off the wedding, Joseph had a dream. Joseph, you must not be afraid to wed Mary. God is the father of her baby, and you shall call him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. The next morning, Joseph decided to go ahead with the wedding as planned. Shortly before the baby was due, the Roman emperor sent out an order to every country in his empire. Hoping to make it easier to collect taxes, he ordered the people to put their names on a register. This really upset many Jews. It reminded them they were not free. Signed, Caesar Augustus. Uh, 
Samuel. Benjamin! Saul. To prevent riots, the Emperor ordered everyone to return to the place where they were born to register. This meant that Joseph had to go south to Bethlehem in the province of Judea. Bethlehem is known as the City of David because it is the place where the great shepherd King David was born. By the time Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, the baby was ready to be born. But the town was so crowded that when they finally found a place, there was no room left. group of shepherds were tending their flock. Oh. <gasps> Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. Today your Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. You will find him in the town, lying in a manger. It's the Lord who sent this message. We must go to Bethlehem. The shepherds told Mary and Joseph what they had heard about Jesus. Mary kept the things she had heard deep in her heart and continued to think about them. Eight days later, Mary and Joseph named their child Jesus, just as God's messenger had told them to do. Do you know one of my favorite things about that story? Ordinary shepherds were among the first to see Jesus. I think that's my favorite story, Helena. Mine, too. I knew it was a trap. You tricked us, Milo. Now, hold on, lad. This soldier's a friend, and he's going to personally escort you to the meeting place. It's just a short walk from here. He'll escort us right to the lions. That's where he'll escort us. <laughs> You must be Zakai. He's just as you described him, Ben. A little taller, maybe. Cassius? Cassius Marcellus! <laughs> I thought I recognized that laugh. You can relax, Zach. Cassius and I are old friends. Don't look so surprised, everyone. Tacticus isn't the only Christian in the Roman Guard. I don't know what we would have done without you, Milo. Yeah, thanks for everything. I know, it was nothing. No, it was something. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Milo. Take care. Bye, Milo. Bye, Regis. Safe journey. Come, come. Our meeting place is filled with friends, and they're anxious to hear your stories. Milo, wait! What is it, lad? Forget something? Well, yes. I forgot to thank you, and I owe you an apology. Ah, you were just looking out for your friends. Yes, but I think I went a little too far. A trip like this makes everyone a little jittery. Why, once a long time ago, a family hired me to take them across the desert road to Egypt. Real nice folks. 
but they'd gotten themselves into some kind of trouble, and they were scared silly I was going to turn them in. Zack? I wish I could remember their names. Jared and Myra? No, that's not it. Zack, come on! Milo, I have to go, but thanks again for everything. They had a little boy with them. Jason and Miriam. No. Oh, that's right, Regis. Joseph and Mary. I wonder whatever happened to those folks. Don't worry, Marcus. We'll find them one day. And until we do, we'll just keep looking. Really? Like a shepherd looks for his lost sheep. You remember the story Jesus told? When he was walking in Galilee. Suppose you're a sheep farmer, and you have a hundred sheep in your flock. Ninety-seven? Ninety-eight? Ninety-nine? Ooh. But there's one missing. You won't say there's only one missing. You'll go and look for it. And you'll not give up until you find it. Find your lost sheep, you are overjoyed. So are all your neighbors. They celebrate with you because you have found your lost sheep. And that's how happy God is when anyone decides to follow Jesus. Good night, my little lambs. Hey, Justin, do you want to play hide and sheep? Huh? You be the shepherd, and I'll be the sheep. Like in Helena's story. <laughs> That's hide and seek, Marcus. And I can't. I'm helping Ben with the gingerbread. Hey, Anna and Cyrus, do you want to play hide and seek? Sorry, we can't. We're making icing. Mmm. Fine, I'll go play by myself. <laughs> hey, Thastus, you're almost a sheep. Okay, now you hide, and I'll come find you. One, six, three, four, two. Ready or not, here I come. Wow. Where'd you 
two come from? You're hungry, aren't you? Stay here. I'll go get some milk. Can I please have some milk? You know where it is, Marcus. Thanks, Helena. Hey, I have an idea. We could play hide and seek. Since I already found you, it's your turn to find me. Okay, come find me. in here. I was just playing hide and seek with the kittens. Kittens? What kittens? Maybe the cubs belong to an African king. Your Majesty. Maybe they came from a circus. Look, I can train them. And what if they belong to Nero? You know what he does with them. Oh, come on, Zach. They're too little to eat Christians. Oh, yeah? They're getting a pretty good start on me. Stop that, Leo. Be nice like Theo. Can we keep them, Ben? Please? They don't have anyone to take care of them. Well, all right. But only until we find their real home. Agreed? Hey! But what do we feed them? Anything but me. <laughs> Starve the bears to madness. I want them fierce and foaming at the mouth when we release them on the Christians. Yes, Crassus. Starve and foam. The lion, however, should be well fed, but beaten. Right. Feed and beat. And straighten these bars before the lion cubs. Phlebas, where are my cubs? I, um, well, um, well, well sure, surely they must be here somewhere. <laughs> or maybe, and this is just a wild guess, they've escaped! Bring out the dogs! <coughs> you find those cubs or I'll feed you their mother. <coughs> I know how you feel. I don't know where my parents are either. But don't worry, I'm gonna take care of you. Just like Ben and Helena take care of me. Nobody's ever gonna hurt you. There, that's where the elephant smashed the cage. It's no use. The rain's washed away any scent of the cubs. Then back to the docks. We'll retrace our steps from there. Fastest, would you like more roast quail? <laughs> Leo and Theo, stop that! Anna, don't yell at the cubs. Ben and Helena don't yell at us. I'm sorry. Hey, stop it! <laughs> Amicus. Ah, Ben, good to see you. But I'm afraid there's no show today. <laughs> well, that's not why we're here. I was hoping you could help me with a little problem. Uh, actually, two little problems. Of course, Ben, anything, anything at all. We were wondering if you lost two lion cubs. Lion cubs? You had the lion cubs? Ben, they belong to Nero. <gasps> They're being trained by Crassus for the Imperial Games. I knew it. Nobody can keep lions anymore, except Nero. That's why I'm closing up. When feeding Christians to lions is entertainment, it's time to move on. If you can't have lions, then what's in there? <gasps> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Mangler, give us your fearsome roar. <laughs> Crassus didn't want him. Said he was too old. <sighs> when they took Mangler's family, they took away his pride. He's been like this for years. Well, what do we do with the cubs? I wish I could help, but I'm sailing back to Africa tomorrow night. Did you say Africa? Oh, no. No. Ben, if I were to get caught with Nero's cubs... <gasps> I'm not afraid for myself, but Salim is the captain of the boat, and I know he'd never allow it. <laughs> Two cubs to Africa? No problem. Oh? Now, will you be paying in gold, silver, or precious gems? Is that it? Of course not. We have this gingerbread, too. Gingerbread? It's really good. I'm sorry, my friends. Really? You don't say. Are you sure? Hmm. Welcome, brother. My wife says you're Ben, the Christian storykeeper. We are Christians just like you. Does that mean you'll take the cups for free? Absolutely not. Your Ben can pay with something far more valuable than gold. A story for my family. And everywhere Jesus went, crowds flocked to see him. Whenever he reached a village, people would bring out their sick children people who could not walk, and those with other ailments as well. They all wanted Jesus to touch them. One day, some people brought out a man who could not hear or speak. They wanted Jesus to touch him also. Jesus took the man away by himself. Ephaphatha, be opened. The man began to stutter. I can speak. I can hear. I can hear. I can speak. Jesus told the man to keep it a secret. But could you have? I can hear! I can speak! How well he does everything! Wow! He can make people hear! And speak! And so, the story just spread and spread. <laughs> and it's going to keep spreading too, because I'm going to tell everyone back home. So, it's all set. Just have the cubs here by midnight tomorrow. Good gingerbread. Well, Ben, you did it. Yes, Cyrus. But how do we tell poor Marcus? Never mind Marcus. Those little cubs ruined my toga. <laughs> it's not funny. No, Marcus, it's time for their nap. But they should pray before they sleep. Okay, now give me your paws. Dear God, thank you for letting me find Leo and Theo. And thank you for Ben and Helena. And for letting us all come and live with them. Amen. Marcus, we need to talk. It's not fair. I promised I'd take care of them. But Marcus, we have to think about what's best for the cubs. We agreed to keep them till we found a home for them, right? Well, we found a home for them. In Africa, 
where Nero and his trainers can never touch them. So, I have to let them go? I'm afraid so, dear. Amicus will be here soon to take them where they'll be happy and free. Marcus, why don't you take a moment to say goodbye to the cubs? Okay. I'm sure gonna miss you. Ah, uh, that must be Amicus. Oh, and here's for taking such good care of the cops. We don't want your money. Oh, no. He's got the cubs, too. What do you mean? But I'm afraid I have more bad news. Crassus also has their mother. Then we've got to rescue them. All of them. Marcus, you don't know what you're saying. It's too risky. But Helmer said, if you lose your sheep, you have to go find it. He has a point, my friend. Ben, you can't be serious. I know that place. Even if you get in, Crassus has guards everywhere. And how do you expect to handle an adult lion? That requires someone with skill, training, experience. And, most importantly, a big enough wagon and a cage. How did I let you talk me into this? Ben, if we get caught, I'll lose everything. Amicus, there's a difference between losing and giving. Thanks to you and your wagon, hundreds of Christians will never have to face these lions. You think I can really make such a difference? Of course. You remember what Jesus said about the widow's might. What did he say? Tell us, Ben. Well, once, when Jesus was in Jerusalem, he was sitting near the great collection bowl in the temple. Many rich people put in great gifts. Some made a big show of it. Another gave bags of money that were so large, everyone was sure to see what he put in. Then, a poor widow came along. The woman had put in two small copper coins. You see that poor woman? She has given more to God than all the wealthy people combined. But some of his disciples didn't understand why that was. The rich had plenty to spare, but the woman had very little to give. Yet she gave all that she had, even money she needed for food. That's why the widow's coins were the greater gift. Huh. I never thought my little circus could be so important. Well, here we are. You all know what to do. What is this thing? It's an elephant horn. All right. Brace yourselves. <laughs> that was for practice. Hey, I think we're supposed to take this out. Chewy, it's showtime! Amicus, are you in position? Go! Okay, let your mom know you're here. Amicus! 
Marcus, hang on! There's a big bump up ahead! Wow! Thanks for the warning! Here they come! Prepare to cast off! Just a little more slack and I'll have it! Well, if it isn't Amicus and his little traveling circus. Traveling away with my lions, are you? We're sending them home. Oh, they're going home, all right. Take them! Mangler? Wait, I remember you. You're that toothless, flea-bitten hasman. Back! Back! I'm warning you! No! Chewy, Mangler, good work. Looks like Mangle has found his pride again. Well, Leon Theo, looks like you found your family after all. Maybe one day I'll find mine too. You don't fool me. You'd eat me if you could. Stand clear! Bye! Bye. Bye. Hey, let go! Keep you far away from me. <laughs> Don't forget to sweep the corners, Marcus. And Anna, we'll need more hay for people to sit on at tonight's meeting. Ben's sure gonna be impressed. Now, Cyrus, be sure to. Cyrus? Where's Cyrus with all the lamps? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. It's an all-time record. Cyrus, stop fooling around. Uh-oh. Whoa! Cyrus! Whoa! I see everything's coming along nicely. <coughs> Justin, stop fooling around. If you have nothing to do, why don't you help Cyrus? <laughs> yes, yeah, Cyrus, just let me know if you need any help. I'll go get some more hay. Three or four ought to do it. These lamps remind me of the shows we used to do, before Nero and the fire. You mean with your parents? Yeah, we were a great team. And now, here he is, my son, the amazing Cyrus. work. People are risking their lives to come tonight and hear the stories of Jesus. This isn't some sideshow, Cyrus. <gasps> My family was the main attraction. Yeah, well, last time I checked, our families were gone. Whew! That was close. Zach, are you all right? Yeah, but Nero's soldiers, they're everywhere. It looks like you lost them. 
I'm sick of sneaking around. I'd like to strike back for a change. Zack, it's not our way. And we can't blame the soldiers for Nero's orders. Some of them are good people, like our friend Tacticus. Why, even Jesus knew a kind and compassionate Roman soldier. He did? Yes. It was when he lived in Capernaum. Some Roman soldiers were stationed there. One of the centurion's servants was dangerously ill. The centurion was very fond of him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he went to some Jewish leaders to ask if they could help. Because the leaders knew the centurion had been kind to their people, they went to Jesus on his behalf. They asked him to come and save the life of the centurion's servant. He built our synagogue for us. He's a friend to our people. Though many didn't trust the Romans, Jesus agreed and went to the centurion's house. The centurion sent some friends out to meet him. Say to him, don't go to any more trouble. It wouldn't be right for you to come into my house, but just give the order and my servant will be healed. For I am a soldier, a man under authority, and, and I know what orders are. Jesus was surprised at what the centurion's friends said. I haven't found any of my own people who trust me like this centurion. Ah. The centurion was delighted, seeing his servant had recovered. Of course, not all soldiers are as nice as that particular centurion. Everyone run. We'll meet back at the bakery. Get them! After the men! Over to the men! You there! Halt! Commander, may I say the bravery of your men in defeating yet another of Rome's fearsome enemies is to be commended. That boy's a Christian and a traitor to Rome. No doubt an annoying pest. I'll tell you what, I'll take him off your hands for, say, 500 sesterces. He made a mockery of two of my finest men, and you're bribing me? Naturally. How dare you? Oh, perhaps this will soothe your injured Roman pride. <laughs> a boy of his talents could be a most valuable slave. Work, you lazy dogs! Zito, take our new acquisition and give him the full treatment. 
Yes, master. <gasps> oh, yes. The master has special plans for you. Well, I'm not staying to find out what they are. Master's relics! Come back here! Come back here! <laughs> Incoming! Whoa! Now I have you! Isn't he wonderful, everyone? My boy, you're going to be the star of my courtyard. M me A star? You poor thing, you must be famished. Zito, why hasn't this boy been attended to? Thanks, but I better get home to my family. Nonsense. They have nothing to worry about. You'll have everything you need right here. Try this on for size. This is really for me? Of course. A boy like you deserves something truly special. Zito, take him inside, feed him, clothe him, give him anything he wants. This boy's going to be a superstar. The little urchin should cause quite a sensation at tomorrow's banquet. <laughs> Especially since our good Senator Pythias has such a fondness for circus acts. Yes, and the Emperor's ear when it comes to wheat purchases. See? And in his claw is a three-headed spear. An eagle holding a trident, eh? That's Flavian's crest. He's one of the richest merchants in Rome. And one of the poorest in his treatment of slaves. They say he works them to death. Poor Cyrus. But Master, I only took a little to, to feed my family. That wheat is for my customers only. Guards, take him out and lash him. I'll show you a pain greater than hunger. Ah, oh, look at you. You're like the son I never had. What's your name, boy? Cyrus, sir. Hmm, we can do better than that. From now on, you'll be known as Cyru, Prince of Jugglers. And this shall be your kingdom. <gasps> Remember, Flavian's guards make their rounds hourly. As long as we're fast, we won't be spotted. I sure hope Cyrus appreciates all the trouble we're going to. This could be dangerous. Justin, he saved me and Marcus from the soldiers. Yeah, and got himself captured. Maybe if he hadn't been such a show-off, we wouldn't be here now. Justin, Cyrus is still a part of our family. You should treat him like a brother. Well, sometimes it's even hard for brothers to get along. Like in that story Jesus told. Let's see. A man and, and his two, two sons were farmers. Half of this belongs to me, but it's not much use to me now. It's time he handed over the farm to us, while we can enjoy it. Father, give me my share of the estate. And so the farmer divided his wealth between his two sons. The next day, the younger son left to see the world. The 
began to waste his money foolishly. And soon his pockets were empty. He lost everything. It was then that the harvest failed all over the land. There he was, no money of his own and no food anywhere. So he found a job with a farmer feeding pigs. He was so hungry, even the pig's food looked good. It must have tasted terrible. Speaking of bad taste, look, it's Flavian's palace. Come on, there's no time to waste. What about Helena's story? She'll finish it later. Now, you keep her safe until we return with Cyrus. And don't forget to clean my new cloak tomorrow. And where's the extra milk and pastries I ordered? Right away, Cy uh, Prince Cyru. Ah, this is the life. Psst, Cyrus, over here. Don't worry, Cyrus. We're here to help you escape. Escape? But I want to stay. What? Huh? Just look at this place. Isn't it great? Are you crazy? Flavian works his slaves to death. Well, he's been nice to me. Look, he gave me that cloak. And I'm performing at the big banquet. I'm going to be famous. Cyru, Prince of Jugglers. Some prince, we risked our lives to rescue you. You're just jealous because I get to live here and you don't. Jealous? Cyrus, what about Ben and Helena? They love you. Well, Flavian loves me too. I can't let him down. I'm like a son to him. Come on, we have to go, Cyrus. Cyru, Prince Cyru to you. Well, whoever you are, you'll thank us for this later. Let go of me! Justin, come on! Cyrus won't come! We can't just leave him! Anna, we have no choice! And now, he headlined in Peloponnesus. He was the Toast of Malta, the lesser-known southern end, and won the coveted Golden Snake in Naples. Here he is, Cyru, Prince of Jugglers! <laughs> You. But first, let's have a big round of applause for the most generous host, this side of the Tiber, Flavian! Enjoying yourself, Pythias? This slave boy is spectacular. I must say, your competitor, Octavian, never entertains me like this. And his wheat has worms. Really? Then perhaps it's time we changed suppliers. Tonight we shall be free. Start, weren't you? 
Weren't you? Come back here! Did you hear? Flavian slaves revolted. They burned down his entire estate. Oh, my. Zack, we've got to find Cyrus. Hitch up the wagon. He must be out there somewhere. But I want to go, too. No, Anna. It's late, and the streets will be filled with soldiers. Besides, what's the point? His lordship, Prince Iru, doesn't want to be with us anyway. Is that why Cyrus won't come back? He doesn't like us anymore? No, Marcus. It's just sometimes people get confused about who really loves them. Remember the story I was telling you? About the two brothers? Yeah. That younger one got just what he deserved. Ah, but you didn't hear the whole story, Justin. You remember, Jesus told his disciples that the younger son was so hungry, even the pig's food looked good. Finally, he came to his senses. <laughs> My father's farm workers have plenty of food, and here I am, starving to death. I know what I'll do. I'll go home to my father. I'll say, Father, I've done wrong. I don't deserve to be called your son, but take me on as a worker. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. Ah. Father, I've wronged you. I've wronged God. I don't deserve... Quick! Get his best clothes out. Get him a ring and sandals. Kill the calf we fattened up. We'll have a feast and a party tonight. I thought my son was dead. Here he is, alive and home again. The farmer's older son had been out in the fields all day. When he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. Your brother's back. Your father's having a party, because he's back home, safe and sound. He became angry and wasn't willing to go in. So his father came out. Look, I've worked hard for you all these years, and I've done everything you asked. And what do I get? But when this son of yours throws his money away and comes home again, you kill the calf for him. My son, my son, we are always together. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate tonight. Your brother's back with us again. So you see, Marcus, sometimes it's very hard for someone to come back after they've left, and sometimes it's just as hard to welcome them back. Please, God, bring Cyrus back soon. Amen. Don't you worry. Ben and Zach will find him. Now off to bed, all of you. They'd never take me back. It's time to go home.
I can't believe tomorrow's Nero's birthday again. Why did the Empress Sabina have to pick our bakery to cook for Nero's party? I suggested using the palace bakers, but she wouldn't listen. After all, I'm just one of her lowly servants. Don't apologize, Miriam. We're just thankful to have Christians like you working in Nero's palace. Open up in the name of Nero. Tacticus! The abandoned mill is perfect for tonight's meeting. Good work, Tacticus. Uh, 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 uh thanks, Ben. I, I reassigned the guards in that sector, so you shouldn't have any problems. Won't you be there? I'm afraid not, Anna. Nero has demanded an audience with his closest advisors, and uh, I must attend. Oh. We should be thankful Nero is so fond of Tacticus. I'd hate to think what he'd do if he knew you were a Christian. Only my closest friends know that, and I plan to keep it that way. You're not the first. You know, for a long time, even Jesus' closest friends didn't know who he was. Until one day, when Jesus led his disciples to the top of a mountain. At the top of the mountain, an amazing thing happened. Two other men appeared beside Jesus great men of God who had died many years before. One was Elijah. Some people worshipped another god, but calling upon the Lord, Elijah set them straight. The other man was Moses, who led his people out of Egypt. This is my son. You must do what he says. Do not tell anyone what you've seen until I have risen from the dead. You see, Jesus knew it wasn't the right time to reveal who he really was. I can understand how he felt. Well, thanks, Ben. I hope it goes well tonight. See you soon? I hope so. But nice uh, uh, seeing you again. Uh... Miriam. It was good seeing you again, too, Tacticus. Tacticus is really nice, isn't he? He certainly is. Anna! We'd better get back to work. The first delivery is due at the palace by nightfall, and our customer isn't exactly the patient type. Master! Hurry it up, you lethargic lunks! Your new altar is quite impressive, Caesar. Of course it is. Would I have an unimpressive altar, Nihilus? It's more than impressive, it's stupendous! The most stupendous oh. altar ever erected by a ruler oh. to himself. I'm no mere ruler, you little toad. I'm a god! That's what I meant. You're the kind of god who, who rules over other gods. What do you think, Tacticus? It's very, um, big. Just picture it. The altar lit and all of you bowing before me. Your god. Speed it up. I don't have all night. Yes, Empress Sabina. Ah! Why didn't you warn me about the filling? Don't just stand there. Fetch me a new pair of shoes. Wow. It must be great to live here. Except for Nero and Sabina and Nihilus. And the guards, I mean. Sabina thinks those spices make her smell nicer. Nicer than what? A dead goat? <laughs> Miriam, if things are so bad here, why don't you just run away? It's not that easy. 
Nero doesn't take kindly to runaway servants. Maybe some handsome man will come to your rescue. Someone like Tacticus. Yes, I can see it now. He'll ride up in a great golden chariot and carry me off into the sunset. And you'll go to some faraway land and build a house in the country. And I could come live with you. I'd like that very much, but I'm sure you'll find your real parents one day. That's what Ben always says. But deep down, I know I'm never going to see them again. Be careful, you oafs! Hail, Nero. Well, what are you waiting for? Start worshipping me! Oh, thank you, Caesar. It's an honor to worship so godly a god as you, my god. Hail Nero, Lord of all. Hail Nero, hail Nero. Hail Nero, hail Nero. What's the matter, Tacticus? Have your knees been injured? No, Caesar. Then why aren't you kneeling on them? Forgive me, Caesar, but... But what? You are planning on worshipping me, aren't you, Tacticus? Well? I... cannot. I knew it. He's a Christian. Prepare to die, you traitorous. Wait. How do you expect a man to worship me if you kill him? Nihilus says you are a Christian. Well, we shall see. You have until my party tomorrow to either bow before me or die. Take him away. And unless Tacticus bows before Nero at the party tomorrow night, he'll be executed. Oh no. Why couldn't Tacticus just keep quiet about being a Christian? We all know following God's way can be dangerous. It was the same for Jesus when he returned to Jerusalem, where he knew many of his enemies would be waiting. It was the time of the Passover festival, and the city was very crowded. There were many soldiers, also fishermen, and farmers from Galilee who supported the freedom fighters. The people had heard about Jesus and were very excited. They thought God's chosen leader had arrived at last. But Jesus hadn't yet arrived in the city. He was in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives. Go into the village. There you will find a donkey. Bring him back with you. Why are you untying that donkey? Our master needs it, but, but he will send it back soon. Many years before, one of the prophets had said that a true king would come to Jerusalem, but instead of riding a war horse, he would ride a donkey. Hosanna! Save us now! Happy is the one who comes in God's name! Bless the kingdom of David! Of course, not everyone was so happy. Some religious leaders were worried by the crowd's excitement. Many people hoped Jesus would lead them into battle against the Roman army. But great generals don't ride donkeys. There had been many so-called messiahs, but this one was different. So, you see, even though it was very dangerous, Jesus knew the time had come to reveal who he really was. But if Tacticus does that, Nero will kill him. Not if we break Tacticus out of the palace first. Oh, Ben. And I've got just the plan. Ben and I can get to the dungeon through the aqueduct. Miriam can help, too. She knows the palace inside and out. We don't need Miriam. We'll have Tacticus out of there before the cock crows. Trust me. Heard you the first time. Poor oh, 
Galacticus. I fear your taste in friends has taken a turn for the worse. You were like a son to me, and now look. Oh, to think I was going to make you Prefect of the Guard. You'd have been the most powerful man in Rome, seeing as how I am a god and all. Ah, oh, well. I suppose I'll just have to give the job to Nihilus. Nihilus is an animal. You can't grant him that kind of power. I'm not. You are. Bow before me, and the power shall be yours. And as for Nihilus, well, surely one of our frontier garrisons could use another man. I know you'll do the right thing, Prefect Tacticus. The right thing? If only I knew what that was. Everybody, Sabina's going to think these pastries are awful. Simply awful. These bronze platters won't do at all. Fetch the golden platters at once. Halt! What are you two doing here? Where are your papers? Oh, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, there you are. We've been looking everywhere for you two. The Empress is waiting for these, and she's furious. Come. I must see their authorization papers first. Commander, do you know what happened the last time a guard kept the Empress waiting? She did. Let them pass. Good work, girls. Now, all we have to do is find Tacticus. You mean you haven't rescued him yet? Not yet, but now that we're inside, he's as good as free. Trust me. Time to kneel or die, Tacticus. Personally, I hope it's the latter. <laughs> <laughs> have to be royalty to get down there. Happy birthday to me, as a god I decree, for now and forever, you shall always shop me. I'm the Princess Ben Green, and these are my sisters. <laughs> We've come to pay homage to Caesar on this joyous occasion. Happy birthday to This will never work. Yes, it will. Trust me. For now and forever, you shall all worship me. You know we will. Bring forth Caesar's gifts, and let the worshipping commence! Our gift to Caesar is the gift of amusement. That's been done. Hail Nero, Lord of all! Hmm. My gift to Caesar is the gift of string. Huh? <laughs> and this golden amulet! Ah, Tacticus. And what shall your gift be? Your devotion or your life? My gift to Caesar is a story. Excellent. I always enjoy a good yarn. 
Of course, Yarn. What was I thinking? You may proceed. This story was told not long ago by a very great man. There once was a man who planted a new vineyard. So he rented the vineyard out to some tenant farmers. After the harvest, the owner of the vineyard sent a servant to collect his share of the profits. But when the servant returned to his master, he had been badly beaten. The owner sent another servant. But they beat him up too. The owner sent other servants. Some were beaten. Others were killed. Perhaps if I send you, they will show more respect. Be careful, my son. It's the owner's son. The vineyard will belong to him when his father dies. Not necessarily. Oh, the treachery, the deceit. I love it. The man who first told this story must have been great indeed. Oh, yes. In fact, he was speaking to the leaders of his religion at the time. And what will the vineyard owner do? Now that his son has been killed, he will go to the vineyard and kill the tenants. Tacticus, the great man who first told this story. What is his name? Jesus, the Christ, my Lord. <gasps> How dare you! I am your God! You will worship me! I'd rather die. And so you shall. Nihilus, slay this insolent dog at once! With pleasure, Caesar. I've been waiting a long time for this. Now! You now. Guess again. After them. One, two, three. It's going to fall. Get down, you clumsy clods. Get. Look what they've done to my beautiful gowns! My altar! Look what they've done to my magnificent altar! Happy birthday, Caesar. Nihilus! I want you to catch those treacherous little Cretans and... Nihilus! This old service tunnel should lead us right to the wagon. I can't believe we got away from those guards! Well, ah! most of them. It's me you want, Nihilus. Let the others go. All enemies of the Empire must be executed, including the little ones. Ah, I pity you, Tacticus. You had everything, and you threw it all away. Your Christian friends have blinded you. You're the one who's blind, Nihilus. Go! 
I shall enjoy watching you die. Tacticus! <laughs> You'd better kill me, Christian. I'll come after you if you don't. I know you will. But not today. I will find you. This isn't the end. It's just the beginning. I've never been rescued by a pack of princesses. I don't know how to thank you. Thank Anna and Miriam. It was their plan. Thank you, Anna. And thank you, Miriam. Nihilus meant what he said, Tacticus. I'm afraid your old life is over. I know. Welcome to the underground, Centurion. After Tacticus is sentenced to death for refusing to worship Nero, Ben and the gang stage a daring rescue, aided by Anna's friend, Miriam. Enraged by the escape, Nero orders those responsible to be hunted down and executed. Pity you, Tacticus. Your Christian friends have blinded you. I will find you. And thank you. Now, Ben and the others must smuggle the fugitives out of Rome. But first, they must deliver Miriam's parents from the threat of Nero's guards. Are you okay in there? I'll be much better when we can see Miriam again. How much further to your bakery? We're almost there, Samuel. Just sit tight. Sit tight? Is he joking? minute you're a first-class citizen, the next minute you're traveling freight. That's what we get for raising our daughter as a Christian. We've got company, Ben. Halt! Who are you? Where are you going? Uh, I'm a baker, sir, and we're off to the millers with a load of grain. Grain, huh? We'll see about that. <gasps> <gasps> Huh. All right, on your way. What's this? I believe it's goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, leave now. Who dropped in? <laughs> Shot! Give it up, Baker! You can't outrun me! That's what you think. down to the port under the cover of night. Till then, you should be safe here. You were saying? Quick, you four hide. Justin, you and the others know what to do. I think I need a bigger pantry. Mm, I'm afraid it's one size fits all. Don't worry, I'm sure it's... Uh... Yeah! Ah! Tracus, Bracus, that's no way to greet a customer. It's okay, everyone. It's just Antonius the Miller with the delivery. 
Uh, sorry about that. Just got them. Raised by wolves and all. Quite a bargain, actually. If I could just get them to stop chewing on my sandals. Now that six bags of Christians at... Oh, my. Don't tell me you're hiding Christians in here again. As a matter of fact... I said don't tell me. Now I have to charge you more. Uh, delivery to Christians. High risk, you know. Antonius, we all have to do our part. Oh, very well. I'll waive the fee this time. Ninety sesterces, please. The sacrifices I make in the service of Jesus. Uh, come along, boys. Enough milling around. Uh, could you maybe give me a hand? Thanks. I guess. I don't trust him, Ben. The way he carried that money out of here, he reminded me of Judas. Who's Judas? He's the disciple who turned Jesus over to his enemies, Marcus. That's right, Zack. I've been meaning to tell you children about him. You see, it was just before the great feast of the Passover. A group of priests became angered by Jesus' teachings. They heard that he claimed to be God, which was a crime worthy of death. And they were afraid he would cause riots, and the Romans would punish all of the Jewish people. He had to be stopped. But how? Jesus was far too popular to arrest publicly. But they thought it better that he should die than to risk punishment of all the people by the Roman army. Then one of their spies told them that Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, was willing to betray Jesus to them. They agreed to pay him a sum of money to do it. Upon hearing they'd agreed to his terms, Judas sent word back to the Jewish council saying he would alert them when there would not be any crowds around Jesus. I can't believe one of Jesus' friends would do that to him. You don't think anyone will turn us in, do you, Ben? Oh, I certainly hope not, Cyrus. But we can't be too careful. Ben! It's Darius. Open up. Ben, the city's crawling with guards. They're going door to door looking for Tacticus and Miriam. If they find them here, you'll all be killed. Search the house. We've got to get you two to the catacombs right away. But they'll need food, water, blankets. Right. Helena, you and the boys stay and get the supplies together. Zack can bring them when you're ready. Hello, Miller. Ah, uh, hello, sir. C -c can I get you something? Flour? Wheat? Breath freshener? How about some Christians? Oh, I'm afraid I'm fresh out. Really? This morning I encountered some on the way here. A little fat man and his helpers. Help me find them and there's a reward for you. A reward? Yes. Your life. Ah, well, since you put it that way, I might know something. This is it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> at least until Salim's boat gets into port. Well, I, know, I know it's not much, but... Uh, what was that? <laughs> is, is everyone okay? <laughs> I'll say. Right. Good. Everyone's fine. Well, if this is going to be our home for a while, I suggest we make it more comfortable. Tacticus? <laughs> By
By the time Zack gets here with the supplies, this place will be fit for a king. <laughs> Well, that should hold them. Wait, you forgot Leo and Theo. Who? My lions. They don't need your old lions in the catacombs, Marcus. Uh-huh. They might get scared in there. Leo and Theo always look after me when I get scared. That's very thoughtful, Marcus. Food and clothing are important, but sometimes we need more than that. Jesus had a friend named Mary who knew this. And although a lot of people didn't like her, she was very special to Jesus. One night, Jesus and his disciples were having dinner at a friend's house. And Mary came to visit. Doesn't Jesus know what kind of woman she is? This is no place for a woman like that. Out of my way. I will come in. If he really is a prophet, he would know all about her. That expensive perfume should have been sold, and the money given to the poor. Leave her alone. Why do you want to upset her? It is a fine thing she has done. There are always poor among you. You can help them whenever you want. But I'm not here forever. And Jesus said what that woman did would be told all over the world. Just like we're doing now? That's right, Marcus. Uh-oh, we've got to move these supplies or the soldiers will get suspicious. I think with some help from Zack, we can start digging a well. Good. In the meantime, why don't we all have a seat? I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I've worked up quite a hunger. All I have is bread and a little wine, but uh, it should be enough. I wonder if this is how Jesus felt on the night of his last meal with his friends. I hope this won't be our last meal, Tacticus. Of course not. But it's my first meal as a wanted man. And Ben, didn't you say that Jesus knew he was a wanted man on that night of the Passover? Yes, that's right. But he knew more than that, which gave the disciples quite a surprise. You see, they had all gathered for the Passover meal in the upper room of a man's house in Bethany. <laughs> One of you, sitting here, having supper, will hand me over to the Jewish leaders. Hand him over? What's he talking about? It's not me, is it? I am not the one, am I? Who would do that to you? It is one of you. He is here. It will be a terrible thing for whoever hands me over to be killed. It would be better for him if he had never been born. That night, Jesus did something new. He took some bread, and after he gave thanks and broke it into pieces, he gave it to the disciples and said, This is my very self, my body, broken for you. Then he took a cup of wine, gave thanks again, and gave it to the disciples. This is my very self, my blood. I will die then all people will know God loves everyone, everywhere. Be careful, Zach. Don't worry. I'll stick to the back roads. Open up in the name of Nero. Hurry, go! Everyone, business as usual. You must be Helena. So very pleased to meet you. Your friend the Miller sends his regards. Sir, the baker's not here. No matter. He soon will be. Listen up, you Christian dogs! If any of you sees your miserable little baker, Tell him he has until the sun sets to show his face, or his bakery will burn, with his wife and children still in it.
And if you're not back by sundown, he'll burn the bakery down with Helena and the boys still in it. We've got to get them out of there. Nihilus has the place completely surrounded. Then I have to give myself up. Ben, you can't. I have no choice. Maybe you do. Anna, I'm telling you, there's no way on Earth to get near that bakery. But we're not on Earth anymore, Zack. We're under it. Zack, where are you going? I'm going to make that Miller pay. He betrayed you. I know it. Zack, no! Come back! Look, you little brats. The baker's wife is out in that kitchen worried sick about you. Tell me where he is, and I'll let you go back to her. No. You're bad. Marcus, shh. The boy is right, Capella. Show some respect. These are children, after all. Citizens of Rome. Yeah. Not only that, they're orphans. How did you know that? Oh, I know all about you. It's only right you should feel some loyalty to the man who took you in. But what you don't realize is... That man is a traitor to Rome. That's not true! Not only that, he's a liar. He's not trying to find your parents. It's just a trick to keep you here, working in his bakery. But I could really help you. He can. He's one of the most powerful men in Rome. That's right. I could find your real parents. I could make you a family again. All you have to do is tell me where the baker is. Think about it. We'll never make it at this rate. We have to. I suppose you're surprised I'm not trapped in the bakery, like the rest of them. Trapped in the bakery? What are you talking about? Nihilus is going to burn it, with Helena and the boys still in there. I don't know what you're talking about. Dracus, Bracus! You can lie to me, but you can't lie to my sword! Is there a problem, Master? No, this young man was just leaving. I don't know how you can live with yourself, Miller. I know I couldn't. Follow him and report back to me. This to be a fire even Nero would be proud of. Ah, that didn't take long. Well, sir, we thought about it. And, well, we do want to find our real parents. Good, good. And we decided the only fair thing to do would be to put your hmm? generous offer to a vote. <sighs> All of those in favor of telling this lying, oh. evil man who burnt down half of Rome <gasps> and is now pretending to be our friend where Ben is, say I. All those opposed? No. no. It's unanimous. <laughs> Fine. Let's see your Ben save you now. Oh, boys, I'm so proud of you. Why? We just did what anybody else would do. Anybody except for that Miller. I can't believe he turned Ben in. Yeah, he's just like Judas. You know, Cyrus, Judas wasn't the only one who let Jesus down. Really? That's right. After their last supper together, Jesus and his disciples walked to the Hill of Olives. It was on the road to the village where they were staying. You are all going to run away. You will all let me down. I'll never do such a thing. I won't let you down. Peter, 
Before the rooster crows twice, before dawn tomorrow, you will have said three times that you do not even know me. I'll die for you first. I would. I'll die for him. They had come a long way together since those happy days by the lakeside in Galilee. Well? He went into the catacombs. Looks like they're trying to dig their way into the bakery. Really? Show me where. We should be getting close now. Just a few more feet and... Baker! I know you're out there! This is your last chance to save your family! Soon, they die! Don't worry, Ben. We'll make it. What is it? It's a boulder. Oh, no! I knew the coward wouldn't come. Board it up and burn it down. Board it up and burn it down. Helena, what are we going to do? Shh, listen. It's Ben. Everybody dig. All right, Baker. You asked for this! He did it! He set it on fire! We're not gonna make it. She's right, you know. You! At least not with these puny shovels. Trackus, Trackus! Antonius, but you, I, I mean... Your young friend was right. I couldn't live with myself if I let this monster do this to you. God bless you, friend. No, Ben. God forgive me. Hurry! I'm hurrying as best as I... Whoa! Cyrus! Gently, please, gently. Who's gently? What do we do now, Ben? I don't know, Anna. But one thing's for sure. We can no longer stay in room. I don't know what happened, sir. They're gone. That can't be. Sir, look. There's a hole. I don't care if you have to dig up all of Rome. You find that baker. Find him! I'm caught hiding him. You have your orders, now go! As Nero's brutal push to capture the leaders of the Christian underground intensifies, Ben and his family flee into the catacombs beneath Rome. Filled with rage, Nihilus vows Baker. to find them. Find him. As Ben, joined by scores of Christian fugitives, plans a daring escape to freedom. Sir, the Christians caved the tunnels in behind them. I don't want excuses. What are you looking at? Well done, Capella. There'll be no escape this time. Excellent work, everyone. Another hour and we'll break for a meal. Ben, how much longer do we have to stay down here? Just five more days, Marcus. Then Salim's boat will take us to our new life in Shemadar. What's in Shemadar? Freedom, Marcus. Freedom. It's an oasis that sparkles like a jewel in the desert. It's a place where the Romans aren't in charge. And because travelers come from all over to meet and trade, from Shemadar, we can take our stories to the whole world. Would you like that? Ben, 
come see our new defense system. You just pull this rope and the boulder rolls down, blocking our escape tunnel from any intruders. Excellent work, Zack. Uh, say, have you seen Justin? Right over there. Ah, uh, Justin, I've been looking for you. <sighs> just finishing up, Ben. You know, your 13th birthday isn't far off. I think you're ready to take on an important new job. Really? What is it? A courier? A scout? A spy? It's all of those. A courier because you're delivering something very important. A scout because you're taking people into new territory. A spy because it must be done in secret and at great risk. What is it, Ben? I'd like you to tell the story at tonight's meeting. You want me to tell a story? Why not? You're one of the best students I've ever had. You know these stories backwards and forwards. But not well enough to tell them to everyone. Why can't you tell the story? I could, but there may come a time when I can't. If the stories of Jesus are to be passed on, then all of us must become story keepers. But Justin, you've told me these stories lots of times. That's different, Marcus. You're my brother. Justin? What's he doing up there? Is he lost? <laughs> Justin. Justin! I guess uh, Justin wasn't quite ready here. <laughs> of course, uh, neither were the disciples when Jesus said one of them would betray him. Justin, it's all right. But I let Ben down. He understands. You're just not ready, that's all. I'll never be ready. You sound just like Ben when he started out. You know, the first time he told a story, he was shaking so badly, I thought we were having an earthquake. <laughs> really? Come on, let's go back and listen. As Jesus and the disciples walked up the Hill of Olives, Jesus turned to Peter and said, Before the rooster crows twice tomorrow, you will say three times that you don't even know me. I'll die before I betray you. I'll never let you down. Nor I. We'll stay with you no matter what. No matter what. They walked until they reached a garden called Gethsemane. Sit here until I've prayed. Telling the others to stay, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him into the garden. But what's wrong, Master? I'm brokenhearted. My soul is full of grief. Stay here and keep watch. Abba, Father, you can do anything. Don't let me go through this terrible suffering. If it is possible, rescue me. But I will do what you want, not what I want. The man I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him and guard him closely when you take him away. Simon Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep awake? Keep awake and keep praying. I know you want to help me, but you're just not strong enough. Still sleeping? The time has come. He's here. Get up. Let's go. The one who betrays me is here. Rabbi. The disciples huh? couldn't understand why Jesus did not try to escape. Stop! Have 
have to come armed with swords and clubs to take me like a common criminal? I spoke day after day in the temple in front of everyone. You didn't arrest me then. And then they led him away out of the garden. Don't worry, Justin. You'll tell the story next time. Hmm. After the men! Remember, Nihilus wants them alive! Keep moving to the next candle. Justin, come on! Hurry, it's not going to hold! <laughs> well, if it isn't Ben the Baker, so nice to meet you at last. Imagine. One of the Christian underground leaders. A baker. Maybe now the bread in the dungeons will improve. <laughs> Lark's tongue, Senator. These tongues are unevenly glazed. Who sent you out with this tray? Helena, thank God you're all right. I'm so glad you came. I promised Ben I would if ever he were in trouble. Is there any word of him? I'm afraid he's in Nero's darkest, most guarded prison. There's no hope of breaking him out, but perhaps I can help from the inside. Thank you, Petronius. In the meantime, we have 40 frightened Christians who must get out of Rome at once. 40? Where are they? Oh, my. Well, no, they're, they're not safe here. Uh, come, I have just the place. The soldiers will never find you here. We've buried our family members in this tomb for five generations. Oh, yeah! Come, come. There's plenty of room for everybody. That's what I'm afraid of. Tell me where Tacticus and the other Christians are hiding. We don't betray our friends. Perhaps thirst will change your mind. Philo, I don't want to die. Quiet, Vasilis. Everyone is scared sometimes, Vasilis. Why, even Peter was scared after Jesus' arrest at Gethsemane. He was? Yes. He was so frightened that when Jesus was taken to see Caiaphas, the high priest, Peter followed behind, afraid to be seen. Peter stayed in the courtyard with the servants, warming himself by the fire. Caiaphas questioned Jesus about his teachings. Witnesses told lies about Jesus, but these men could not even make their stories fit together. Why don't you answer? Why don't you defend yourself? Why do people say all these things against you? Once and for all, are you the Messiah, the great deliverer? Are you God's son? I am. Ah! We don't need any more witnesses. You have heard the terrible thing he has said. They all voted that Jesus was guilty and should die. You were with Jesus, that man from Nazareth. I don't know what you're talking about. 
this man is one of those who followed Jesus. No, I'm not. Of course you're one of them. You come from Galilee. We can tell by your voice. I swear, I don't know this Jesus you're talking about. Before the rooster crows twice tomorrow, you will say three times that you don't even know me. I'd never betray Helena and the others. Me neither. I know, boys. I know. Helena, the place is filled with thieves and smugglers. Who better to smuggle us out of Rome than a smuggler? Come on! Zach, you watch the kids. I'll be right back. Don't worry, Anna. My dad used to hire circus hands at places like this. Just act natural, and nobody will bother you. How much for the girl? I need a house slave. Sorry, she's not for sale. I say she is. Actually, she's going cheap. A real bargain at only... 200 sesterces. Shake? Oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> An old trick my dad taught me. <laughs> hey, where's my money? <laughs> but that's three times the going rate. With all your respect, shipping fugitives is risky business. Fortunately for you, I'm the best. Very well, but we'll need to leave tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? That's impossible. We'll never be ready. I thought you were the best. All right, then. We'll sail at midnight. But don't be late. Ben, what happened to Jesus after Peter lied about knowing him? He was taken before Pilate. His courage was amazing. Silence, Baker. As long as he deludes them with these stories, they think they'll be saved. But take the Baker away, and the flock is lost. Our faith is stronger than that. But not stronger than Rome. Soon you'll know the wrath of Nero. But first, you'll know mine. The Praetorians will find Tacticus and the others. Why should we die, too? We can't turn them in. Philo was right. Ben said we don't betray our friends. Well, Ben's not here. But if he was, he'd tell us to be brave just like... like Jesus was before Pilate. What do you know of that story? Well, just... just tell it to me. Only... louder. I... I know that Caiaphas, the high priest, had made up his mind that Jesus was dangerous. He decided it would be better to execute him than for everyone to be punished by the Romans. But only Pilate, the Roman governor, had the power to order an execution. The religious leaders told Pilate that Jesus called himself a king. Are you king of the Jews? Those are your words. The temple leaders brought many charges against Jesus. They said Jesus was raising a rebellion. He told people not to pay taxes to the Emperor. They said he wanted to start a war with Rome. Pilate was surprised that Jesus said nothing. Haven't you anything to say? Why don't you answer these charges? At the feast, Pilate used to set free any one prisoner that the crowd asked for. At that time, there were some rebels in prison. Their leader was a man called Barabbas. We ask for Barabbas! We want Barabbas! We ask for Barabbas! Barabbas! Free Barabbas! Would you like me to set free the king Barabbas. free? Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Free Barabbas. Then what shall I do with the land you call king? Give it to a cross! Crucify him! Crucify him! But what awful things has he done? Barabbas. 
then ordered that Jesus be flogged. King of the Jews. And they led him out to be executed. Justin is right. Through all of it, Jesus never faltered. He never gave way. Justin, you did it! I I did, didn't I? Ben's gonna be so proud of you. This will never work. It has to. Rowing slaves for Senator Petronius, huh? This isn't signed by Nihilus. Nihilus? Since when does he have... Fine. I mean, fine. You can explain our delay to Nero himself. The Senator's seeing him tonight. Ben the Baker, son of Simon of Galilee. You are accused of being a Christian leader, of inciting anarchy and rebellion, and of... We all know what the charges are. Treason, treachery, sabotage. <laughs> you find this amusing, Senator? Yes, surely this is a joke. Are we to believe this pudgy pastry maker is the daring rebel who has outsmarted Rome's bravest soldiers? I doubt he can bend down to tie his own sandals. <laughs> A word of advice, taste less, bake more. <laughs> I tell you, this baker is the man. My dear Nihilus, you'll make Caesar the laughing stock of palaces from Gaul to Egypt. Huh? Release the baker at once! Wait! Caesar, ask him. Just ask him if he's a Christian leader. Sire, is that necessary? Why embarrass the court any further? Oh, formalities. Very well then, Baker. Are you or are you not a Christian leader? Yes, I am. Huh? I knew it. I knew it all the time. Despite the preaching of our gullible Senator Petronius. Take the Baker away and kill him. Move him out. Let's go! We'll miss the tide! Wait! There's one more! Helena, I'm afraid I have bad news. Ben's been sentenced to death. He has two days. Don't worry, Helena. We'll think of something. We always do. Woman! We must cast off now! We're staying to help Ben! Then so are we! No, Tacticus! You're in more danger than any of us! We'll meet you in Malta, then leave for Shamadar together! Take good care of Anna for us! We better be going. The task ahead of us is nearly impossible. You there! Come out or taste this cold steel! Friend or foe? Fortunately for you, friend. An old friend. Zemo? Cyrus, it's really you. It's Zemo, the magician from my parents' circus. Imagine their joy when they see you're still alive. They'll be in Rome tomorrow night. Anna, Helena, did you hear? My parents are coming to Rome. That's great, Cyrus. Cyrus, what is it? What's wrong? It's Ben. He's been like a father to me since the Great Fire. And now he's in prison. I tell you this. If the man who's kept Cyrus safe all this time is in danger, then Cyrus's parents, the great Saban and Risa, will stop at nothing until he's safe. And neither will I. There's more hope tonight than I had expected. 
Come on, everyone. We've got plans to make. Yeah! Having safely smuggled a group of Christians out of Rome, Helena and the others are surprised to learn that Cyrus's parents are still alive. Imagine their joy when they see you're still alive. Though longing to accompany their friends to Shimladar, where they will be safe from Roman persecution, our heroes must first turn their attention to Nero Stockade. Water. We need water. There, Justin and Marcus suffer without food and water. And Ben awaits execution. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Yes, one I hoped we'd never see again. What? But Rome's the most wonderful city on Earth. You must forgive my wife. Our only son was killed in the Great Fire. I... I'm sorry. Don't worry. As soon as we meet up with our friends, we'll leave Rome and never again return. There, there. We don't have to go ashore. I'll leave word for the others to catch up with us in Capua. Good old Zemo. We should have known he'd be here to greet us. Come, we'll go ashore just long enough to say hello. Mom? Dad? Cyrus! We return to Rome in hopes of finding our old circus friends. Still, we never dreamed we'd... Oh, Cyrus. I missed you both so much. I just wish Ben could meet you. And so he will. I'll not let the man who took care of my son die in some dungeon. Cyrus is lucky to have such fine parents, but you mustn't get involved. Helen is right. It's too dangerous. We appreciate your concern, but we aren't leaving until Ben is free. I told you they'd want to help. Wanting to help and actually helping are two different things. What do a couple of ex-circus clowns know about breaking into the Imperial Stockade? Enough to know it won't be easy. But fortunately, your clowns have friends in high places. Continue to starve the others, but see the baker gets plenty of food. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint the lions. Just because the baker must die doesn't mean you all have to. Give me the names of your Christian leaders and you'll go free. Maybe these people know something you don't, Capella. That some things are worse than dying. That's where you're wrong. Nothing is worse than death. A lesson you Christians should have learned when we executed your Jesus. What do you know about Jesus? I know he died like a common criminal. You see, boy, I was there. Faster, you! Behold! The King of the Jews! On your feet. Wait. You, come here. In Jerusalem, executions were held at a place called Golgotha, or Skull Hill. Two other prisoners, guerrilla leaders, were to be executed also, because death by crucifixion is a particularly painful experience. Jesus was offered wine mixed with myrrh, a spice to deaden the pain. <gasps> the 
the men hung a sign on the cross, King of the Jews. Some gambled for his clothes. So this is the one who would pull down the temple. If you're so powerful, why don't you get down from that cross? <laughs> if it's true you saved others, why not save yourself? Even the religious leaders mocked him. Let the so-called Messiah get down from that cross. Then we'd believe him. And so it went. He hung there for hours. As the crowd taunted and teased him. And then, it was over. Why don't you tell the rest of the story, Capella? What rest? He died. Yes, but it was no ordinary death, was it? Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. If you are the Messiah, why don't you save yourself? And us. Quiet. We're guilty and deserve to die. But this man has done nothing wrong. Remember me when you are king. You'll be with me in heaven today. Mother, take my friend John as your son. And John, take my mother as your mother. My God, why have you left me alone? He's calling Elisha. Let's see if Elijah will help him. They don't understand. I'm thirsty. Father, I put my whole life in your hands. storm that day what of it the point is jesus died and that's the end of the story no capella it's just the beginning believe what you like christian jesus of nazareth is dead and unless you tell nihilus what he wants to know you will be too all of you I told you we had friends in high places. Don't worry, Zach. Father Circus friends are just what our rescue plan needs. <laughs> if they live that long. Eat up, Baker. Our nihilists will punish us both. Let me finish the story you started earlier, and I'll eat every bite. The story was finished. Or do you hope to convince me your Jesus didn't really die that day? Oh, he died. But that doesn't mean the story is finished. A man named Joseph from the village of Arimathea went to see the regional governor. Because Joseph was an important member of the Jewish council, he was admitted. Yes, what is it? Governor Pilate, I have come to ask permission to bury Jesus of Nazareth. You speak as though he were already dead. He was crucified this morning. At first, Pilate was suspicious. But when he learned Joseph was telling the truth, he agreed to release Jesus' body so it could be buried. It was almost sunset when Joseph got back to Golgotha. They wrapped Jesus' body in linen sheets Joseph had purchased in the city and carried him to a nearby garden where a tomb had been prepared. There, you said it yourself. 
Jesus was buried, just like any other man. Yes, but there's more, you see. What's that? Huh? Don't just stand there. They may be trying to rescue the Christians. It'll take more than a few circus performers to break into this stockade. We knocked, but no one answered. Welcome. I hope you plan to stay a while. Everybody. Down here! Don't worry, we'll get you out. How? <laughs> I wish we had this fellow working for us all along. Back to the wagon, everyone. Here they come. I'll be glad when this show is over. Come on. Get to the wagon. I'll be right there. We'll meet you at Salim's ship. Good luck. I warn you, Capella. If the baker escapes, it will cost you your life. I guess I won't hear the rest of that story after all. Ben, hurry! No! Do you know what you're doing? Making sure you get to hear the rest of the story, that's what I'm doing. Are you crazy, misguided... Please don't kill me, Capella. Where are the other prisoners? They escaped, sir. All but the Baker. I would have made it too if it weren't for Capella. It's a lucky thing for him you didn't. You have interfered with my plans for the last time, Baker. Take him to the Circus Maximus. The lions have waited long enough. Are you sure we can break Ben out of the Circus Maximus before the lions get him? Just like the time we saved Cyrus and the others from Giganticus. After we get to Shimadar, I hope we never have to rescue anybody again. You should have escaped when you had the chance. But then you never would have heard the rest of the story. How can you sacrifice your life to tell me a story? Maybe you'll understand when you hear how it ends. Thinking back to that day, Capella, you remember a group of women, Mary from Magdala, Salome, and Mary, the mother of Jesus and James. They had been with Jesus in Galilee, and they were there the day he died. Maybe now the Jews can find themselves a real king. This man was a real king. Surely he was the son of God. By the time they reached the garden, it was almost sunset. Shabbat, the Jewish day of rest, was about to begin. The morning after Shabbat, the women returned to the garden. They had brought sweet-smelling oils to put on Jesus' body. But when they arrived at the tomb, they were surprised to find the large stone had been rolled away. looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who died on the cross. You won't find him here. He has risen. Go tell his disciples he will be in Galilee before you, and you will see him there, just as he said you would. And don't forget to tell Peter. Although they were afraid to tell anyone what they had seen, who would believe such a story? 
they decided to tell the disciples everything. And then the man said, he has risen. It's just as they said. disciples that I'm going up to my father, to your father, to my God and your God. Mary, are you all right? What is it? I've seen the master. <gasps> Baker, do you believe this story? I wouldn't be here if I didn't. The question is, do you? been a change of plans. Nero has ordered the baker taken to the outskirts of Rome and crucified. But what about the Circus Maximus? The lions? Merely a decoy. The baker's friends will surely attempt another rescue. Only this time, they'll walk right into a trap. Away from the Circus Maximus. Seems security conditions have improved. Country air wreaks havoc with my sinuses. Come, Nihilus, let's proceed. Why don't you do the honors, Capella? Consider it your reward for foiling the Baker's escape. Yes, you! Oh, do get on with it, man! I know you don't have a choice, Capella. It's all right. I'm going to be with my lord. Yes, but not today. Ah! Traitorous dog! You've just signed your death warrant! Death is no longer my enemy, Nihilus. You are! Consider this your dishonorable discharge. Justin, you drive, and don't forget Capella. Yes, sir. Some rescue, eh, Capella? Capella. Oh, no. At least I got to hear the rest of the story. There are many more to tell. And I expect you to keep telling them. All of you. You saved us, Capella. No. You saved me. It's all your fault, Nihilus. You! You and your ploys and traps. You couldn't trap a legless cat. I'll have those Christians in chains by sunrise. Oh, no, you won't. You have failed me for the last time. 
what's the meaning of this? I came to see an execution, and I'm going to get one. The next man who touches me dies. How dare you? I won't forget this, Nihilus. Mark me. Your days are numbered. So are yours, Nero. So are yours. After him! Nephew! Safe journey, my friends. God be with you. And with you, Senator. Thank you for taking care of Capella. He'd be honored to know he's being buried in your family vault. After what he did for you, he is family. Ben, these are my parents. At last. I don't know how to repay you for all your help. It is we who owe you the debt. Oh, my. Take a good look, everyone. We won't be coming back. I can't believe we're finally on our way to Shemhadar. Me either. Are we almost there? <laughs> <laughs> Sail away, little Christians. Sail to the ends of the earth. But know this. I will find you. And vengeance will be mine. Narrowly escaping Nero's death sentence. Death is no longer my enemy, Nihilus. You are. Men and the gang flee Rome aboard Salim's boat. Their goal, the Arabian village of Shemhadar, if they can get there. Sail away, little Christians. Sail to the ends of the earth. But know this, I will find you. And vengeance will be mine. Now that my family's together again, we're gonna tour the whole world with our circus. It must be nice. I don't think Marcus and I will ever see our mom and dad again. I know I won't see mine. Me and my big mouth. Hey, that funny light is still following us. Marcus, I told you, it's just the reflection of the moon. Nope, I know what the moon looks like. Children, we're ready for you. We are gathered here tonight for the marriage of Miriam and Tacticus. Is there a dowry for the bride? But these are yours and mother's. They've been in the family for generations. And they will be for many more. Miriam and Tacticus, you share both love and courage. Now, in your joining, may you also share the love of God. And with that love, build a home that will honor him forever. As captain of this fine vessel, I pronounce you husband and wife. I'm so happy for you, but I just wish I could give you a better gift. Actually, you can. And, uh, Ben's told us about your parents. How you lost them in the Great Fire. He doesn't think they're alive. I know they're not. Well, the gift we really want is for you to be our daughter. You do? God's helping everybody find parents, except for us. He hasn't forgotten you, boys. Just sometimes it's hard to see what he's doing. I'll say. I have an idea. Why don't we get ready for bed, and I'll tell you a story about how Jesus helped his disciples when they thought he'd forgotten about them. Of course, only Mary had seen Jesus at the tomb. 
But later, Cleopas and another disciple were on their way to a village called Emmaus. They were remembering Jesus' death and all that had happened since. Jesus himself joined them. They did not recognize him. What are you talking about? You must be the only visitor to Jerusalem who doesn't know what's been going on the past three days. What things? All that's happened to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a true man of God, but his enemies handed him over to Pilate, who sentenced him to the cross. We had hoped that Jesus was the man who could set our people free, but now he's dead. What's more, some of our women gave us a shock. They, they said that when they went to visit his tomb this morning, it was empty. His body was gone. If only you could understand. Don't you see what the scriptures are all about? Didn't the Messiah have to face all of that? Wasn't it the only way for him to triumph? And as they walked, Jesus told them all the stories in the Jewish scriptures that talked about the one God would send. Wait, friend. Why not stay with us? It, it's getting late. Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Then they suddenly realized who he was. <laughs> but before they could say a word, Jesus was gone. Did they ever see him again? They sure did. But that's a story for another time. Good night, my angels. Marcus, what are you doing? I'm looking for that funny light I saw before. But I really saw it! Go to sleep, Marcus. You're so tired, you're already dreaming. <laughs> what are we doing here? Port Said is too dangerous, Zach. It's still a Roman outpost, and they'll be looking for me and Tacticus. That's why you, Justin, Marcus, Helena, Tacticus, and myself will cross to Shemadar through the desert from here. The others will take the shorter road from the port. But that means splitting up. It's for the best, Anna. You and Miriam and everyone else will be in Shemadar long before us. And we'll expect a big hug, just like this. <laughs> Miriam, when you get to Saeed, ask for a scribe named Yaakov. He may have word of Justin and Marcus's parents. Do you think they could still be alive? For their sake, <laughs> we must hope so. Goodbye. See you in Shemadar. Goodbye, Anna. See you there. God be with you. Ben, how are we going to cross 200 miles of desert wasteland without a wagon? <laughs> You're killing me, Reach. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, Ben! Right on time. So nice to see you all again. Well, most of you. Milo? Oh, no. What's wrong, Zack? You'll see, you'll see. And then there was a time I led the 200 Ethiopians across the Negev. Now, what were their names? Isika, Nagin, Ripti, I remember him, Manitubinus, and Chimi. Wake me when it's over. Further to Shemhadar. Two more days, eh, Regis? Two and a half. He thinks we'll be delayed by raiders. What are you talking about? He's just a dumb horse. You were saying. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait.
Where are you taking us? To bounty hunters. Where else? You and your convert will fetch a huge price. You're both still wanted by the Emperor. No! Yes, an advance on your fee. Look, you have what you want in us. Let the others go free. They are free. Free to die of thirst. in Rome. I was so disappointed you didn't try. Give me a sword and I'll make it up to you now. Easy, Tacticus, easy. I told you I was a great climber. Just another ten cubits and... Then we've got to find Ben and Tacticus. The horse was tied to your camel. You tied the knot? Just don't lose them. Remember, Baker. Dead or alive, the reward money is the same. No, Tacticus. You must preserve your strength. We may yet have a chance to use it. Oh, great. We've lost their tracks. What are we going to do? What are you two now? The Doubting Thomas brothers? They're not brothers. Me and Justin are. I know, kiddo. It was a joke. Thomas was a disciple who wouldn't believe his friends had seen Jesus, Marcus. How come? He wanted to see for himself. Remember how shocked the two disciples were when they realized Jesus had come back? Wasn't it exciting the way he talked on the road? He made the scriptures come alive like I've never heard before. And so they left immediately, heading back to Jerusalem to tell their friends what they had seen. And that's when Jesus appeared again. <gasps> Shalom. Peace be with you. What is upsetting you? Look at my hands and my feet. It's me. Touch me and you'll see. It's true. I'm alive. Have you anything to eat? Now, poor Thomas wasn't there that evening. But when he returned... Thomas, where have you been? Where were you? We have seen Jesus. The disciples told Thomas how Jesus had appeared to them. I don't believe you, but it's true. We've seen the master. Unless I see the nail marks on his hands and feet and touch them and put my hands in his side, then I won't believe you. A week later, all the disciples were together again, including Thomas. Suddenly, Jesus was again standing in their midst. Shalom. Peace be with you. Look at my hands. Now reach out your hands. It's all right, Thomas. Show me that you trust me. My Lord and my God. Be 
you trust me just because you've seen me? The people who trust me without even seeing me are the ones who are really happy. Of course, that doesn't just go for Thomas. It goes for us as well. I think God's going to help us find Ben and Tacticus, even if we can't see them. That's the spirit, Marcus. Hey, look! Milo, what's wrong? From the looks of these tracks, Ben's not going to last much longer. Ben! How fitting that the baker gets baked in the end. <laughs> please, please help Ben. Just give him the strength to walk. If your God answers prayer, why has he left you to die in the desert? <laughs> Not dead yet. Ben, are you all right? Of course, Tacticus. I just needed a little nap. <sighs> We're breaking camp. If we don't keep walking, they'll kill us. Tacticus, listen to me. I can't walk. I've listened to you many times, Ben, but this time I won't. I can't let you die in this desert. Tell me, Tacticus, who will carry you when your strength is gone? Master, look! Go get him! Nice horsey. Stay horsey. Dumb horsey. What took you so long? Get back in line and watch that horse. Ben! Ben! Tacticus, it's Zack! Zack is here! Um, yes, Ben, of course he is. No, no, try to relax. And look, Helen is up ahead, too! Ben, please, you're delirious. You can't see Helena. Then who's that? It's that woman again! I order you to let them go! Kill her! And this time, finish the job. to kill me after all, but at least I'm taking you with me. No! You're not. No, Tacticus. This time, you won't escape me. Nihilus, take my hand. No, I want your life! Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey now. I'm sleeping on the job. I think I see an oasis with palm trees and water, too. I don't think the children can last much longer. Zack, how much water is left? Here, Marcus, drink this. How's that? Better? Yeah. Now I see our parents waving. Marcus, don't start this again. I'm telling you, the only thing out there is sand. And Mom? And Dad? I just want to say, well, thanks. We couldn't have done it without you. Well, what are you talking to him for? He's just a dumb horse. <laughs> On such a happy night, how fitting it is to tell a happy story. This will be the first time we've heard one, without being chased or having to hide. <laughs> I can get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you see, after Jesus appeared on the road to Emmaus and in the upper room, he came again to his disciples in Galilee. Some of his friends were fishing in the Sea of Tiberias. They had fished all night but caught nothing. As dawn broke, the disciples gave up rowed back to shore. Have you caught anything? The disciples could not see it was Jesus calling to them, even though it was light out. Try the starboard side. Simon Peter, look, it's Jesus. Master, bring some of the fish you've caught. Come, let's eat breakfast. This time, none of them questioned who Jesus was. They knew he was the Lord. Then, about six weeks later, Jesus was teaching them on the olive hill near Bethany. Then your job will be to tell everyone, everywhere, all that you know about me, starting here in Jerusalem, then in Palestine, then in foreign places like Samaria, and finally, to the very ends of the earth. They knew then that the death of Jesus was not the end. It was only the beginning. And so it is for us, as we carry these stories from here to the ends of the earth, each of us can be a story keeper. Even me? <laughs> Even you, Marcus. For now you know the stories from Jesus' birth to his loving acts of healing. From his most amazing miracles to the way children simply loved him. And as we pass these stories on, may others come to find the love of Jesus just as we have. Until one day, there are as many story keepers as there are stars in the sky. <laughs>